Hi, yeah. Ah, yeah. Podcast host. This is Jamie Farr from the TV series MASH. And uh, Yoko Chips uh, wanted me to say hi to all the guys. And I got their names here. Art, Franco, Scoot, and of course Yoko Chips, Mike, and the other Mike. And they, uh, they had a question. They said, uh, who was Klinger's favorite comic book and superhero? Well, I believe you have me uh, confused with uh, Radar. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I just emailed uh, Gary Berghoff, who played Radar, and he told me that uh, his favorite comic book, actually, was Wiz Comics, and his favorite character was Captain Marvel. Uh, but you got the right guy, Jamie Farr, because I love comic books. I had a whole bunch of... I had the, the first Superman and the first Detective Comics that introduced Batman. As a matter of fact, uh, at one of the conventions, I met Bob Kane, and he did a rendering of uh, Batman for me, and uh, I, I can't find it, otherwise I'd show it to you, but look at, uh, here's some of the collections I have. My wife got me this one here, and of course it uh, has all the great uh, characters in there, uh, the Spectre and Hawkman and Plastic Man, and, and of course uh, here's uh, the great comics. I used to uh, enjoy those. Uh, I get uh, the uh, uh, New York um, uh, uh, Mirror and the uh, Chicago Tribune, they get all the uh, the comic characters, and I wanted to tell you, I had all the originals. They were absolutely pristine, and uh, when I got drafted into the Army, I had them all put in my uh, mom's uh, garage in a nice big barrel, and guess what? When I got out, she uh, she had given them all the way. I could have been, I could have retired. <laughs> I didn't have to do a mash. I had all these wonderful, absolutely beautiful comic books that uh, that I had, and, and I loved them so much. And uh, Scoot, I guess you're from Toledo, and you like Tony Paco's, so I have a picture of that. So listen, guys, I like podcasts. I'll, uh, I'll check in with you. Uh, uh, Jeff Maxwell, who played Igor, uh, has uh, MASH Matters, which is a podcast on uh, about, uh, you know, MASH, and of course, Alan Alda has one called Clear and Vivid. So nice talking to all of you, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, listening to your, uh, your podcast. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. I have seen that. Oh, he said geez. Tony Pacos. He said yeah, there it is. The mud hen's hat back there. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, God. As oh, soon like... as he said, I left my comics at my mom's house, I just oh, was you know the yeah, running the rest Chris, of the I way. Know what's you knew what was coming. I like, it, I like how you put them have... in a nice box and kept them perfect for me. You never hear that story. So I, I like... yeah, the dog needed a chew toy. That's what. How about name checking all the heroes? Uh, Hawkman yeah. and the Spectre. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, oh, my Barber. God. You know, well, and he's going to be such a big fan. I he's like how be... you have 15 intros to the show now. I, like <laughs> I was going to say, he's gonna wa I'm going to send him a link, and uh, he's going to be so disappointed when he sees the Oh Yeah podcast. I, and, uh, what is this? Why Why are they, you know, we love Jamie, if you are watching, because I will send you this link. We absolutely love you. I did send a message saying you exceeded our ex expectations with that incredible uh, well wish, and, awesome. and thank you so much. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah Thanks, we do Jamie. talk about you on the on the pod all the time, and he's gonna yeah. watch this and go. The, the only time. person I like is that Ted Stone. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only normal. One. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he gets here, I'm gonna oh, say. Do you have the player action figure? Show it. <laughs> uh, there it, it is. It. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We got a clinger a clinger action yeah. figure. So that's fantastic, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when welcome to Word Balloon and uh, the IYAP yeah. podcast. Yeah, uh, you know the, the regulars. Podcast. Everybody's here. It's uh, Art Franco, Scoot, Skoke, Mike, and so happy to welcome our special guest, an animator extraordinaire, the creator of Darkwing Dunk, Duck, 
Dunk. <laughs> dunk. Hence the wallpaper. That's a much better name. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go back that. in the time machine and uh, and fix it. <laughs> Tad Stones, everybody. Yay. Oh, Woo-hoo. yeah, Tad Stones. All right. Say, man. So, yeah, what'd, uh, you th- what'd you think of the Jamie thing, man? How about that? I, I thought it uh, was incredible. You know, it's something. People often like bring up an old Darkwing Duck toy for me to sign. And that's cool, you know, and and the new Funko Pops and all of that. Um, but to have somebody say, "Look, I have this image of you." Yeah, that's. <laughs> I hope you get used to that. <laughs> Show them the action figure. Oh, here. Um, no, it was incredible, I, and obviously it was a real thing. But just. We, Again, when he goes on to say, I had this and it was pristine and all of that, I did tell my mom uh, that because at a certain point, like when I was in high school, you started to get those. That was like the first time the, you know, like suddenly, what, there was an auction of Superman, the first action comics for, it went for $300? Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, this, so I'd say, oh, yeah, these will put me through college. She used to say, I thought those are going to put you through college. It's like, you know what? I did all right. And you threw away my uh, Donald Duck stuffed animal. So, <laughs> yeah, man. Signed by You want to talk Paul. about things? Uh, yeah. yeah. So you got a, you got so, a Bob Kane sketch. Wow. At a convention. Yeah. I had, hey, yeah. Bob Kane pitched me a show. Wow. Really? Talk about that, Ted. That's amazing. When I was at, I, I, my history at Disney is very weird. And even now, I, I, or even back then, I would say, why did why did they call me into that? What why was I in that office? But they needed somebody to. I guess I was in story at the time, but not on a feature or something like that. But anyway, I was called to to uh, uh, because Bob Kane brought in um, uh, what was the thing? Uh, I forget it was courageous uh, cat, the cat yeah. man, a minute back. courageous cat yeah minute. courageous cat yeah uh, and that. That was one, and then, uh, and I forget how that happened because I just realized as I was telling this story, I said, oh no, I remember the pitch that I took. Uh, a security guard at Disneyland had an idea for a sequel to Snow White, and you know, he said it to, to somebody, and they just yeah. basically needed somebody to like pitch it to. To front. And I was, I was like, I was a kid. So I, again, so it was like whatever the executive was, and I was there. It was like, oh, and the seven dwarves. And, you know, I don't remember the pitch at all, but it was one of those things like that's how small the company was back then. That wow. security guard says something to somebody and suddenly you're at the studio lot. When I I started at Disney in 1974, right after wow. Ron Clemens, who Ron was there like five, six months ahead of me. Uh, and Ron went on to, you know, do Little Mermaid and Aladdin and wow. reinvent uh, movie uh, uh, animation along with John Musker. Uh, and then just before Glenn Keane was arguably one of the top animators of all time. Uh, so that was my little uh, look there uh, in the in the 70s. But I walked all around, you know, the, the, the studio and ended up, That's cool. you know, like I say, on these weird special projects and, and uh, moved on to, to story and uh, designed rides at for Epcot Center, got wow. to work with Ward Kimball, one of the all-time fantastic animators, uh, nice. in a little room, like eight by ten room, for nine months. Uh, then there was a good year and a half where they really shouldn't have been paying me a salary and <laughs> just dodging the bullet. But Disney was so small when I started. The the animation department, not counting the ink and paint ladies, because that's when they still were painting cells. Yeah, that's uh, right. It was just. 55 people. Wow. 55 wow. people, and they put out a movie every, like, five years. So the one that had come out just before was Robin Hood. Yes. And then yeah. when one I the came best. there, it was the original Rescuers. So I came in wow. and yeah. in between on that. And I was such a bad in-betweener, I came really close <laughs> to being fired back then, uh-huh. seriously. Um In fact, I used to do some in-betweens for Ron Clemens, who probably spared me, probably went in and and I know he actually corrected a bunch. Um, but once I, I I did something really fast and he came out of his office and said, what did you do? These are really good. And the fact that he was that surprised, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, I felt so bad. You know, I'm glad I did a good job. Sorry for the rest of the jobs. But uh, 
I think it worked cool. out for him in a different way. I think a little but it was a tiny t- it was a tiny company. We used to walk around the back lot and go up into the the uh, catwalks of the sound stages and throw super balls off just to you know watch how they bounce because the sound stages were being used to store 16 millimeter educational films because oh, cool. the company was so small it didn't even occur to them that you could rent out these stages you know make a little yeah. coin in between your movies because they did only about three movies a year and that was like the era of cat from outer space the computer wore tennis shoes and the world's oh, greatest <laughs> athlete kurt yeah, russell yeah. robinson you know. crusoe um, yeah 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 yeah, uh, the uh, well, that would have been a little earlier, I think. Oh, we okay. had the real like the the Midville comedies, you know. That's Joe something. Joe Flynn uh, is the dean. Why, yeah. What's wrong with you kids? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then uh, and then I was there. So I was there when I started doing my TV shows. I actually got to be my first shows were still edited on film, and I got the taste of that and the limitations of that. And then, of course, in the digital era. And then the biggest switch was from that tiny little company when uh, Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg, and Frank Wells, those guys came in. Yeah. And a lot of what they did early on was just common sense. It's like, well, it's a movie studio. What say we make some movies? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it was like, yeah. So that changed the world. But, uh, you know, it was, it was a great change in... Well, now, this is before, I think I left before, I know I left before they started buying up the half of the world that uh, mm-hmm. the other guys don't own. So That, bring, that brings anyway, up something so. interesting because I, I wanted to, the, the reason we actually asked you here is because we wanted to pitch you a new Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but, well, yeah. Know, what, yeah. your, <laughs> what is your security guard background? Because. <laughs> oh. I can look like one. Maybe you don't have it. Yeah, I'm good at well, running from security guards. I can run said, from actually, <laughs> actually, in the in the new Ducktales, in the episode where they uh, invent the new Darkwing, um, the I actually play a security guard. I'm a seagull. Oh, oh cool. I'm a security guard. Yeah, I always thought a good a good. Oh yeah, what's that? Oh, I was uh, yeah. If you, no, finish your thought, Artie. It's cool. Oh, I was gonna say. A new a good pitch would be uh, that Snow White marries Dopey, you know, <laughs> and then one of the and Doc dies. So now there's only there's only seven, six dwarves now. A lot of tragedy in uh, your yeah pitch. Like yeah. Because it's, it's real life, it reflects our real life, you know. This guy's happy. Yeah. 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 So, gets mad. Tyler has a good question. Were yeah. you involved in the uh, Disney Renaissance years? Pardon me. Uh, Tyler wants to know if you were involved in the Disney Renaissance years. Uh, well, everybody's got a different definition of when that was, but I started with all those guys when I was already in TV when uh, Ron and John were doing the first drafts of Little Mermaid because they sent oh, nice. me a draft to read for my input. But I was literally next to Ron at a, we had a gong show meeting, so Eisner's would ha- and Katzenberg would do those. And for those young ones who don't remember the Gong Show, Chucky Baby, Chucky Baby was part of it, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was you know, uh, you know, you come up, you do an act, and you've got thirty seconds, and then mm-hmm. if you're not good enough, they you get gonged and you get pulled off by a hook. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you it's would come stuff. in, and they'd say, "Oh, we're doing a Gong Show for Michael and Jeffrey." It's like you pitch story ideas in as short as possible thing and they just say not being mean they they might ask a question to but they say gong do that and i was there when ron pitched little mermaid and the response was guys you already did that you did splash it was a great movie and ron who's kind of a quiet uh spoken guy uh tried to explain it was a whole different thing um and they said, no, I mean, you did it. It was a fantastic film, but we don't want to repeat it just in animation. And luckily, <laughs> everybody went around the table, pitched things. Um, and then at the end, they didn't have, because this was on a Saturday, of course. Um, at the end, they said, okay, we didn't get through everybody. I want to go home. <laughs> I just had this dog in the room. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, hand in things that you, you know, that you didn't pitch. Well, Ron handed in the Little Mermaid. When they finally read it, they realized, oh, wait, this is 
an entirely different thing. There's a sea witch. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was it was it was <laughs> not Eel. Splash. Girl, mm -hmm. Hannah, Ariel. Tom Hanks. There's, there never girl. says Tom Hanks in here once. Right. He's not there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, those were, I mean, it was a whole different way of, of thinking about things. And, Did they uh, ever bring up? Uh, so the renaissance there oh, yeah. was really because both the talent of Ron and John and, and uh, all the guys in, in story and, the, you know, uh, the other guys and several of them were still working there doing Frozen, Frozen 2. And, yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was their talent and it was also... Jeffrey Katzenberg, who really took to animation because of Howard Ashman, who did the music for Little Mermaid and Beauty and the yes. Beast, uh, and really taught Jeffrey about musical theater. And a lot of those rules went right into animation about, no, you don't stick in a song. You take your most dramatic moment and make that a song. And that's how you're, you tell the story through music. Uh, and Jeffrey really just took to animation and... Uh, and I told this story a lot of times. We had a projection room, which you'd call a sweat box. You'd do sweat box notes, which are kind of like dailies in live action. But, you, you know, you watch, look an animated scene or a reel or something, and you give notes on it. Uh, so they're showing this to Jeffrey and uh, of the Black Cauldron, actually. And uh, Jeffrey said the Horn King was coming down the stairs. He says, do you have this from another angle? And the room was kind of quiet. And then the producer said, we could draw it from another angle. And then Jeffrey, you know, laughed like that. And and the older crowd there, and these weren't the guys who worked with Walt. They, The nine old men had moved on. So kind of the second tier because yes. management wasn't ready to trust the young guys yet. Uh, they all got this chance to step up. And they were very derisive of that moment. They were saying, look how little Jeffrey knows. And I think the younger crowd looked at that moment and said, he's thinking about it as a movie. He's saying, basically, this shot isn't powerful enough. You need a better angle on it. You need, you know, he's thinking about it as a movie. One of the things yep. Jeffrey did was bring uh, film editors into the process early on. So while the storyboards were becoming more cinematic, as they're cutting it together to the soundtrack to get the feel of the movie, the story editor could ask for, you know, if I had this kind of shot, I could really make more of this and link this together. He'd work with the directors. So immediately, just on a film side of things, the movies got much better, more cinematic. Yeah. Because frankly, up till that time, you know, the films were being done with the same film rules as Snow White or Pinocchio. Sure. I mean, great standard stuff, great way to tell a story. Uh, Wooly Reitherman, who's the director of a lot of those middle pictures, like Hunter Window Mations, which is fantastic, but Aristocats and Robin Hood, which are notably less fantastic. Um, anyway, he was very good about showcasing the animators, but he wasn't one to cover up the action by doing a multiplane shot or having, you know, he wasn't one for mood. It was like, oh no, let's make sure everybody's looking at this spot, highlight them, and let the animators do their do their acting. That's outstanding. So that was a long answer to a question, which I'm I like. Chad, that, that yeah. was amazing. Don't kid yourself. stuff. That was fantastic. Now, at any point in the Little Mermaid, I don't know if you were there, and I know it's an internet rumor. I don't know if it's true, but was it really based off of Mo Alyssa Milano, the character design? <laughs> that's what I heard. That the I Little do. Mermaid Ariel was based off of Alyssa Milano. I don't know. I if would say, real. I don't. I couldn't say for sure, but I know Glenn who basically designed her and that doesn't seem like a fit to me oh okay no. so it's no. it's a rumor actually what's really strange is uh sherry stoner who's a fantastic animation writer and, and comedy writer uh she also was the live action model for little mermaid oh cool uh, and <laughs> the weird thing i had lunch with her when i was at tv and she was an animation writer and had lunch with her and it was very unnerving because Ariel's movements were her movements. So she'd like, you know, do something with a glass of water and move her head in a certain way. Yeah. It's just like, okay, I'm. This is, this I thought you were going to say so, it was yeah. unnerving because she ordered shrimp for lunch. Just one big lobster. I'll yeah. have the spinach salad. <laughs> yeah. 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 And she said, well, 
people say stoner, but it's actually pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> more tartar sauce, please. Yeah. <laughs> so, more like, lemon. How about Floyd Norman? Any any uh, Floyd Norman mm. uh, encounters and stories? I didn't. I didn't meet. I guess I met Floyd at least once. I went over to merchandising and licensing where those guys were, but I didn't know him well there. I know him now. Um, but uh, God, Mike Royer was over there, and it was just oh, that's like great. certain things didn't click. <laughs> that it's like if I if I was really like. Hey, my, he was the anchor for Jack Kirby and doing these that you yeah. collected and all that, you know, you know, it's, it's those conversations not had, you know, that are just, you know. Got yeah. it. Um, we're mentioning Mike Royer, also the the Marvel superhero cartoons. He he was one of the animators that took those comic panels and, you know, moved an arm or a leg or literally would tilt the uh, – the panel to make it look like animation. Yeah. Or my, my animation you feature in you mean when actually, Captain America yeah. throws his mighty shield? Yeah. Exactly. All I those who think, chose to I oppose was, that shield must yield? Classic. <laughs> yeah. Johnny, I was talking to you about Chuck Harrington, my animation uh, professor in college, yeah. and he, he worked on those. And and uh, and I asked him why, and, and he said, well, because Marvel wanted their artist and they had drawn all the all the pieces, you know, like Captain America, and uh, they said, you know, well, we have to animate this, and they didn't like the animation. They're like, no, you have to use our artist. So what they wound up doing was taking just the arm, and moving the arm or or moving the lower jaw, because that's the only way they could keep the actual drawings from from the Marvel artist. Yeah, that's I, I, I gotta person. say, there had to be a budget thing too, because I, I remember so at too. the times Stan Lee in his soapbox actually kind of did a backhanded. Kind of thing of like, well, it's not Disney animation. Is wow, what he's referred to it, but they're great stories. Well, back then stuff. the animators would would their supplies were they get the comics and scissors. They're like, all right, guys, go <laughs> totally. for it. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. totally. Absolutely. And of course, it didn't matter how many different people drew the Hulk. You know, none of yeah. them matched because well, yeah, right, they did go Hulk. Did go, did go Hulk, go Hulk too. to uh, mm -hmm. Jack Kirby Hulk. Herb Trim Hulk. I remember yeah. again at the time those are the comics I grew up with. Um, yeah, there was a debate that. The Hulk kept getting better looking as he moved on because those early Hulk comics, which I have as some, um, the thing too, were, he looked like you know, Ditko drew him like, oh yeah, well, I, you know, here's the thing. I was just wondering this, and I guess we can ask Mark <laughs> Evanier. Um, when you look at a Jack Kirby pencil page, it's like, you know, if he was doing it today, someone would just put it into Photoshop and turn up the. Uh -huh. The contrast, contrast. and yeah. pretty much yeah. it would be there because yep. he shaded everything. No little, at least few that I've seen, little X's he'd shaded in. So, like so changing the thing from that lumpy, yeah, bumpy skin guy from those first couple of issues to the chick stone, I you know, it could have just been the anchor. I mean, it was just like that's like a basic shape of this guy was this huge kind of pyramid shape. To this guy with the heavy eyebrows and, and the thing, it's it's kind of like I never hear anybody talk about that mutation, that change, because I don't remember it being a gradual thing. I mean, I came into, uh, I mean, I read DC and Silver Age comics and Big Boy comics for that matter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from when I was a little kid, um, and the Marvel comics, like I, I uh, hit right. My first comic was. Tales of Suspense, I want to say 38, was Iron Man versus the Melter in the big yellow suit. And the other, the second comic was Tales to Astonish 49. It was the issue where Ant-Man became Giant Man, beautifully mm -hmm. illustrated by Don Heck. Um, <laughs> it was one of my favorite artists who doesn't get credit enough. Agreed. Um, but it, that was the era. But then you could, and this is, was the fun of comic collecting back then, you could go to used bookstores and generally, they had a big box of of comics just thrown in there for a nickel a piece. Yep. I got two copies of Avengers number one for a nickel each. Wow. I got you know, and, and then to fix to kind of fill in the gaps, you could write into Marvel, and I think I got Avengers number three. I can see the cover. I'm trying to think. Yeah. It's two or three. Um, anyway, the uh, uh, I got Space it for Phantom, thirty-five maybe? cents. 
Yeah. It was oh, wow. Space Jam, oh, yeah. Cool. That's so fantastic. number 35 <laughs> says directly from Marvel because they yeah, just sold awesome. off whatever back issues they had laying around. So sure. In a big manila envelope. Can and you it's imagine? It's one of those things where, geez, if you know, if you just thought about it, say, like, oh, maybe I should take this seriously. You know, but uh, that's cool. That's amazing. Man. That's so great. Well, like you said about um, the evolution of the thing in the Hulk, um, the way that the armor went from gray to just the yellow bulky suit. And yeah. then my favorite like moment, and I think it only lasted for like six months, and I don't even know if it was bi-monthly back then, but um, I had Dick Ayers do an Iron Man sketch for me with uh, the faceplate where the, yeah. uh, the it oh came up in the, the oh. triangles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's, that's my the, the and I, favorite Iron Man. Yeah. And I and I learned about yeah. that from the Marvel superhero cartoon because that's where they, you know, the, whatever that story was, they used those designs. Yeah. Yeah. It was well, that, that design. There you go, Adam Boy Mike. Yellow and there oh, you go. Yeah. The yellow yeah. and red <laughs> suit was designed by Steve Ditko. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. He's, wow. he's the one who created whatever he thinks of Iron Man's color scheme. I mean, if you grew up at a certain time, you'd say, no, Iron Man should be silver and red, you know, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I know, yeah. I know Stan. Uh, I know that, Stan. That literally was Steve Ditko's thing. I know Stan Goldberg too was a, an early Marvel colorist and responsible for some of the color schemes and things like that. And I, I before he passed away, I saw him a, a few times talk about stuff like that. So and for, yeah. and for like two issues in the seventies, Iron Man had a nose, and it was weird because oh, he had a nose for like just like two two issues. Do, but George that was Tusco, the time. right? Yeah, that, yeah, I think so. And that, but that was the time when Mar when uh, Miko Miko Toys got the Iron Man permission to Iron Man, and they looked at the comics to see what he looked like. And so the Miko Iron Man toy has a nose because they made the toy at that same month that book was out. Wow! And, and that's why forever I know Iron Man with a nose because that's my first like <laughs> when I bought the, when I had the toy. I was like, why? Who is this guy? You know? And I looked, and he didn't look like. Iron Man, and I thought until this day, everyone thinks that he was supposed to be Doctor Doom because of his oh. face, the way it looks. Because oh, you could see yeah. his eyeballs through his square eyes, and mm -hmm. you could see his eyeballs and his teeth. And everyone thought that was supposed to be Doctor Doom. That's Ernie. amazing. Yeah. What did cool. your dad name him? Because your dad always gave him different names. He was <laughs> he was always Iron Man. Yeah. Okay. I think we might have okay. called him Iron Man. Tell, yeah. tell Chad what, what he called your other guys because it's yeah, well, I got the at Christmas I would get Mego action figures. So I got one year I got the thing in Human Torch. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm a little kid. I don't know what their names are. And my dad told me their names were Rockman and Bernard. <laughs> Bernard. So he was Bernard forever. You know, until until I got a comic book. Because that was the first time I ever saw the thing in Human Torch and Mr. Fantastic were the toys. Amigo action figures, and I didn't know who they were because we would buy the comic books with no covers at that time. Or, but we'd always get uh, okay. Justice League or Richie Rich and all these books. But so I finally got Fantastic Four when Super Scroll was fighting Spider Man. I'm like, wait, he's calling him the Human Torch, and his name is Johnny. I'm like, his name's not Bernard. <laughs> and that, that's when Art. That's when Art found out his dad was human and a liar. Yeah. <laughs> and also, when I was a little kid, I was about four, and my dad told me one day. That he was Batman. And I'm like, how can you be Batman? And I'm like, where's the Batcave? And he goes, oh, it's under the house. We had an apartment. And we were like, it's small. <laughs> like, it's under under the house? He says, yeah. I'm like, where's the entrance? How do I get there? And he goes, oh, it's the back porch. So I'm in the back porch looking for a <laughs> hole, a hole, a doorway. And then I said, hey, Dad, who's um? Do you have a Robin? Who's Robin? He says, "Oh, Al, his friend Al, Al. Robin. Some, he was some, he was some poor, Puerto Rican guy with a handlebar mustache. So he had black hair. They were cool. They were like they look. My dad and his friend looked like Tony Orlando and uh, Freddie Prince Jr. That's what they looked like when they, when I was a kid. My dad looking like with the mustache and the big hair. And he goes, "Hey, how's it going? You know, that's how they were." No and I said, Al, Al, Robin? And I'm like, I don't believe you. And then the next day, my dad, we got a phone. So my dad brought home a phone, and he hooked it up, and it was a red telephone. And he plugged <laughs> it in the wall. And I'm like, you brought it home. A, you are Batman. So I waited all day the next day by the phone. I'm looking at it. I'm a little kid. Anytime the phone rang, I would say, yes, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, Artie, get your dad. <laughs> Batman's not here right now. He's working. Batman's not here. Artie, where's your mother? Batman's, Batman's not, not here. here. So <laughs> he had to tell me, don't answer. <laughs> I'm not Batman. But yes, you are. We have a phone. 
So I still have that phone because uh, it was a dial phone. Dial, but so I he had was to, the first uh, guy to basically say, "I'm Batman." I'm Batman. Did My dad from that way, or did he, did he get close to your ear and go, "I'm Batman." I'm Batman. Well, he probably said it happy because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably said it like this. I'm Batman. I'm I remember Batman. when I asked Al if he was Robin, he was very confused. So either he. <laughs> Either he was lying to me, or he knew how to keep a secret. You know, he was just now. Wait a minute. When your dad renamed the thing and the Human Torch, was he just playing with you, or had you just thrown away the wrapping and it was like, uh, he's? I can't uh, remember. You know. I well, we didn't keep the packaging. We just opened them up. We we when well, you open it. up Christmas presents, you open it up the gift wrap and you open it again. You you keep going yeah. until the. And I remember opening Lone Ranger and his horse that way, and I have. I'm started playing with him. Like you still have more gifts. Oh, okay. And then you move on to the next thing. But that's how you open presents. So I don't remember ever opening the box. Like if he came in a box or a card back, I don't remember. But I remember so I didn't know who they were. Dad would read. So. And it's obviously my dad didn't read Marvel comics. He read, he read uh, Batman and Superman in the '50s. He was. I was born in '68, so he was he was in Vietnam. He didn't even right. know what Marvel was. He knew Spider Man from the cartoon because I used to watch it. Sure. Maybe the comics, but he didn't read them, so he didn't know who he was. He didn't know who the thing was. He said, "That's Rockman." Like, oh, cool, Rockman. <laughs> and I'd make him fight the Hulk because they had the same bodies. I knew who the Hulk was because of the cartoons, <laughs> and I always wonder why didn't they make a Submariner cartoon or a Mego figure because he was on TV. But that was uh, that was it. But Iron Are, Man had a nose. Okay, right here's after. here's a question. That, yeah, because we're all different ages here. Did anybody else call him Submariner? My father yeah, called him Submariner. Mean, I did. My father yeah. did. Because my family, yeah. when, when somebody said they're a Submariner, I said, no, a Submariner is a guy who works on a submarine. That's a I'll real right thing. Back. This is the yeah. Submariner. So, oh, that's yeah. funny. And I, I, I always that, thought man. of the uh, the the um, the poem, the ancient one. Well, I mean, not that I was reading this at eight years old, but whatever. <laughs> I read the ancient Mariner. So I, I thought Submariner, but my father would always call him Submariner. Absolutely. I remember because a cartoon called him Namor, the Submariner. And then the baseball team, the Mariners, were right. Were, that's how I knew it. Sure. They had the cool logo with the pitchfork. Yes. The M was the like Titan. a pitchfork. Yeah. And that's what I remember. The Mariners and Submariner. Yeah. Now, Tad, did you have Aurora models? Yeah. Uh, the, the monster models? Well, also the superhero ones. But yeah, the monster ones too. Sure. Oh, that I didn't have the superhero ones. I had the classic um, Frankenstein, werewolf, yeah. Dracula, and the mummy. The things that go for billions of dollars, I assume. Yeah, the no, mummy, I hear you. The mummy was the best paint job ever yeah. because basically I'm painting it, I'm just screwing it up, and then I use the paint thinner to wipe it off, which meant all the all the colors just stayed in the cracks. And yeah. It perfect. It was like, wow, I yeah. I've been into this technique. But uh, no, uh, sadly, I uh, the guy across the street um, was around. Uh, I mean, there's a family over there, and and the adult guy was about thirty some years old. And I'm doing the math in my head. It's like, I wonder if he has any old comics. So thinking, <laughs> he's like golden age guy, and he yeah. did. And I paid. I forgot what I paid. 10 bucks or something for wow. three stacks of comics. And they're mostly cool. um, cowboy comics, a lot of Disney comics. So there's probably a lot of original Carl Barks stuff there. Wow. Um, and a certain number of superhero comics. And that's when uh, the first comic shops were opening, not direct market shops. The We'll sell this comic for 35 bucks, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to this... Guy in Hollywood, Burt Blum, Cherokee Bookshop. Stay. <laughs> Curses stay. <that> um, <laughs> well, it's kind of like I had this list, and there was like a Wonder Woman there, and things, and they weren't in great condition, but they were. And there was a couple of Captain Americas from the, uh, like the commie age, you know, fifties, so sure, in the early fifties yeah. or something. Um, anyway, I said a list. He goes, "Well, I'd have to see them," and so my mom was. You know, outside down the block in a car in Hollywood. So I'm going down there. I get that. I have to bring him in. And uh, he looks through them and he does this thing where he takes them and then he puts them behind him <laughs> and says, Well, I can give you whatever it was, this amount of money in trade in kind of stuff. And it's like, 
You brought your toaster. Here you go. It, it, it wasn't. <laughs> I'll trade you yeah, this. Pretty much. So all I was, I basically got the one comic I needed that completed my set of Fantastic Four, which was Fantastic Four number five. You know, Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. Um, it, anyway, the I still had money to spend, and it's like I didn't have a list of comics I needed, or didn't have anything in mind. So some guy had made uh, models of just vacuum formed a hero blanks pretty much like you know hong kong vinyl now uh and you know basically painted them up to be superheroes no more detail than what was painted on so i picked a goliath when giant man became goliath because it matched the mold so it looked the best i didn't have any special affinity toward him it was like okay well this is five dollars i guess mm -hmm. um so I walked out of there with that. I have no clue what happened to that thing. I mean, it was, <laughs> it evaporated before I got home as far as my memory is concerned. But it was just like, it wasn't about the money. It's just like, I wish I just had those things and held on to them just to have them to look through when I started to know more about the artists and stuff like that. But, but this sneaky way of taking care, I mean, I was a teenager, but the idea of I'm taking it and putting it behind me. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. giving uh, those back It's a psychological <laughs> ploy, you know, it's like. He knew uh, that if you wanted them, there must be something about these things. Exactly. Well, he, he was in the business. I mean, he was yeah. one of the first ones who started. There was like a uh, three comic shops there. It was Cherokee Bookshop, Collector's Bookstore, uh, and then I forgot what the third one was. It was before Golden Apple. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that was when it was just comics were still kept in boxes. Yeah. You know, just cardboard boxes. Nobody was shrink wrapping them or yeah, you know, mm -hmm. putting them in even in sleeves and all that. Where uh, where Art it was Franco? Beyond, it was beyond the five cent box though. When Art and Franco had, they have their star uh, store in uh, Skokie, Illinois, suburban Chicago, and there used to be a place called the News Depot, and it was just a newsstand, and just like you described. In the back, you could get Silver Age comics in the 70s for peanuts. Mm -hmm. And I would constantly yeah. buy 80-page Giants and other 12-cent comics that I remembered as a very tiny kid. I mean, I was born in 64. And I most of the 12-cent comics that were, were given to me, when I started buying comics, they were already 15 and 20 cents. So, yeah. 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 Jesus. I got to say that, <laughs> that in those used bookstores, the non-Marvel comics that I would buy – were uh, Metal Men, which is awesome. a, uh, which are kind of like you know the Ross Andrews stuff. Uh, which Ross are, Andrew. Man, Ross Andrews. I, I, yes. I went back. <laughs> I actually pitched a Metal Men show to Warner Brothers once, and they oh. gave me like Xeroxes of a lot of the wow issues. Bruno, uh, the Italian ones. artist, Bruno Primiati or whatever. Gabe Harden knows his name by heart. Yeah. I forget his name from the uh, Silver Age, the Arnold Drake stuff. But yeah. those. But those comics were insane. I loved them, and you realized they were actually the most Marvel comic, yep. DC comic, because right. it was all about the personalities of the robots. Yeah. Uh, but here, <laughs> there, was a, there was a build. They go to a planet, and it's like the artist and writer were like looking around their house and saying, oh, that's a nice pasta maker. I use that roller to make pasta. Okay. <laughs> so, that could be a building. So I don't know whether they were rollers or I think they were pasta rollers, but you know, they were giant robots. Made of Hilarious. I love the, the gas gang and stuff like that. And the other comics I collected again, with these five cent shots, uh, I just love Gil Kane's artwork. Uh, yeah. And I bought Adam and uh, Green Lanterns. And for those original flash Green Lantern crossovers and probably some flashes too, but I realized, looking back at the time, I just, again just focus. I gotta get these anything with the little Marvel box in the corner. Um, I probably could have found showcase whatever it is when Flash was you know the beginning of the Silver yeah, Age number four, four probably there four. you know. Oh. But just to be able to collect those things would have been fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look, here's a good question from Brad. Uh, did you collect Turok comics? I know you worked on the animated uh, movie. I had some. I didn't collect them. I had some, and it was perfect because um, we didn't – Turok was a big video game at the time. They didn't have the rights to adapt a video game or anything like it, so you could only do the classic gold key stories. Wow. Which I thought was perfect. Yeah. But uh, I think it was Tony Benedict who did our script. Is that right? A comic a writer. Um, you got your IMDb up. Uh, 
uh, anyway, he it was that classic time, but they turned it into a story of brother against brother, and it was more about a Native American story. Except, I said <laughs> when I read it, I said. There's only three dinosaurs in here, and one of them is a giant bird. <laughs> and that was, I actually started spitballing a story, which sounded great, but Antonio was on the phone, I think, and would have been freaking out. And it was like, wait a minute, that would be a page one rewrite. You should thinking, have made yeah. one of the dinosaurs his brother. <laughs> I mean, I talk, I said that to, I said that to Mike Mignola, and I said, yeah, this is Turok. There's hardly any dinosaurs. I remember Turok as a, as a, guy, you know, this Indian in the Lost Valley who dips his arrows into this poisonous berries and can shoot down dinosaurs. And Mike says, no. No? Truck is the guy who goes into the hidden valley, dips his arrows into the poison berries, shoots a dinosaur, skins it, and r makes boots out of it so he can walk <laughs> across molten lava. <laughs> that is how the brain of Mike Mignola works. That Outstanding. Guy, he's just, gets to the essence of things, and uh, I swear, it, it's Mike doesn't drive, and when studios would like call him in for a meeting, they'd send a driver. And between his house in Manhattan Beach and wherever he was going, you know, whatever studio, I mean, he I, he comes up with three or four movie worthy concepts. It was that's just, amazing. His brain puts those things together. But the truck one is like, yeah, that's the movie I wanted to do. As it was, the movie was like the most violent thing ever. In fact, they questioned me <laughs> when we, they said, here's the guy who's going to, you know, produce direct your, your movie. Um, and they said, well, we don't, you know, he did these Hellboy things, but this is really going to be, this is our first thing for adults. This is going to be violent. And it's like, okay. In the script, they had a scene where um, a tomahawk comes through and basically wow, goes through a mouth and cuts Ooh. a head off. And okay, we did that. And <laughs> I don't think it was animated. I think it was. I think it was just in the story reel, the animatic. And he saw that one. Oh my god! I, it was in your script. Realize that. So. You could. So, you could have always changed it to Hollywood, that bird dinosaur. So. <laughs> That's exactly. amazing. Jesus. So. Hey. Um, anyway, that, that was a that was a weird project, and and. Uh, Again, I wasn't involved in the story other than trying to, you know, you know it was get a more action to it as we went through. Mm -hmm. And and did they finish it? Forgive me. I, I didn't know there was an animated movie. I mean, is it out there? It was just, oh, it was just, uh, I, we did our two Hellboy movies. Right. Uh, and really, we they had to overlap in production. So, uh, excuse me. <coughs> so there's, there's really no learning curve. So by the end of the second one, it's like, oh, now we have to do it. And and uh, Mike and I wrote a third one, which now we knew what worked and what didn't work. The first one was like Mike Mignola short stories in feel, and we actually adapted one of his stories. Well, Screw on head, right? Japanese right? legends. Uh, no, no, this was things like uh, Screw on head was a whole different production. Oh, okay. But this was uh, sort of stone. a short story called Heads. It was a Japanese story that he actually oh. and we basically took his story and took a lot of the staging right out of it but it, wow. there was a connective material that was a uh, sort of storms hellboy yes it's sort of storms that's our first um, conversation so that's back in the day. yeah then the uh second one was more hellboy's central european roots so it was vampires and blood and iron uh yeah. and uh you know elizabeth bathory and, and uh that was that. The third one would have been the most fun because it was basically Nazis, uh, heads in jars, <laughs> cyber apes. It was the mad scientist side of Hellboy, and it, nice. that would have been awesome. But we finished that script, and they said, well, we need you to do this truck project, and then you can go oh. back onto Hellboy. So he oh. did the truck, but in the meantime, they sold the company to Stars, and Stars didn't want to put their own money into stuff, and, uh, and frankly... We're pretty sure that stars didn't know they had bought an animation company at the time because they were buying the company basically for its backlog of video movies that they had. They just needed the content. They did a lot of horror films and things. Um, and I swear they would have shut everything down except when you came to the studio, that was the studio that did The Simpsons. 
not writing The Simpsons, but actually produced it. So when you walk and you don't know that whether you have an animation studio or you're still wondering about, and then you see The Simpsons on the wall, it's kind of like, well, wait, I recognize them. Don't they do well? Don't they make yeah. money? So <laughs> That's very popular. I think they kept it, so yeah. Um, so that was, that was way after Disney, obviously. Well, and the so help was... The did the Turok movie ever ever come out? Because yeah. uh, I don't. I don't yeah, know that I, I mean, it's direct to video. I mean, you find okay, it because it wasn't know. listed on your IMDb, but I I do want to find it. I'd love to see that. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh it's, my a, God. it's a it's a it's a trip. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, Let's put it this way: the two highlights of my career for me personally were Darkwing Duck and Hellboy animated for oh, cool. entirely different reasons. And with Hellboy, it was really being trying to get that feeling of Mike Mignola stories in it, as opposed to putting my spin on it. Um, but being able to write characters going into a haunted house, and it's not like Scooby-Doo where the house looks creepy and then <laughs> and Shaggy is already shaking and, oh, it's a haunted house. <laughs> uh, no, it's like a live action film where, no, we're gonna split them apart and they're, each one is gonna have this experience. Uh, my favorite one was uh, Abe Sapien is next to this big picture window of, of you know, big glass, you know, divided up in little frames, but this huge, like, wall-sized window of this mansion. And uh, he's talking to Liz Sherman or something via walkie-talkie and, and just saying, no, nothing's, uh, nothing's happened here yet. And, and then you see his breath. He goes, wait a minute, the temperature is dropping. Mm. And it's just that kind of thing. And I mean, you saw him in front of this window and then a moment later you go wide again and the window is covered in bloody handprints. Nice. And that oh, ties cool. into the story where all these uh, women were killed by Elizabeth Bathory uh, and it's their spirit still haunting the place looking for justice. And oh, it's cool. basically their handprints. Uh, so it was kind of coming up with those things. Hellboy walks into a kitchen. He, and he goes, I know you're in here. Show yourself. And knives fall off the racks and land on a point first on a stainless steel table and just start spinning. And it was just coming up with just images like that. One of my favorites was uh, we had this woman in the middle of a Japanese woman playing a, a, a Japanese stringed instrument. And she's just in the middle of the woods. And Hellboy's looking at her. And then you go in close on her fingers as she plucks the string. And... A little drop of blood goes along the string and falls down as she's playing it. And I remember Mike saying, "This is one of the hugest compliments." He says, "Oh, I'm going to tell people I did that." <laughs> so, but that I really love that. And Darkwing was what everything we've talked about earlier. It was my love of the Silver Age. He started out as a a secret agent, was not all that excited about, and then mutated partly for legal reasons, but. At a certain point, he was supposed to be called Double O Duck. And then we renamed him Darkwing Duck. And I was like, that freed me of the spy stuff was still in there. Yeah, kind of like, yeah. well, they finance him. Um, but it was me basically remembering covers mostly of The Flash. Um, you know, Flash is an old man. Or how many <laughs> times did Julius Schwartz go back to the well to give the same story of look, Superman is super evolved and his head is they like, big like heads, yeah. shape. And, then they, and then they did it with Lois Lane and they yeah. did it with the Flash at Superman, least. So at least three times they did that. I don't know that yep. they did it to Batman. That would have been funny with the little ears on top. He turned into a gorilla, oh. though, at one point, I think. Yes, there was that gorilla. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, Tim. some of those, I... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I wanted to ask you, because, I mean, you, you've done Darkwing Duck and then you did the Hellboy stuff, and... Do you get pinned down when you're doing Darkwing Duck, and then when you're trying to go to Hellboy, they're like, "No, you can't do that. You do this stuff." You, did, did, you, did you have? Did you no, have was, uh, no, because well, first I had 30 years at Disney, where I started in features, and then was one of the first people was literally in the first meeting on TV animation at Michael Eisner's house, uh, and then went back to features, thought about leaving the company, and instead they said, oh, well, come visit us at TV Animation. Ended up there for, I don't know, another 15 years or more, uh, where I did all those series. And then basically, um, you know, I was getting raises. I, I had just been along <laughs> around enough that 
my salary is up there. And uh, the executive at the time, David Staten, just basically said, we're not going to renew his contract. They actually, I had something in development and they actually extended my contract to see if it would go, it didn't go. And this is, I don't feel too bad in that this is the same guy who fired uh, Ron Clemens and John Musker saying, I think they're holding you back. And then when John Laster came in, he brought them right back. He says, they're the legacy. You don't fire the legacy. Wow. And they went on to do a whole bunch of other movies and yeah. their executive did not stay. Somebody, um, somebody had to real So fast. anyway, I had, le I had left Disney and my first project was, uh, and luckily, like some of those times when I renegotiated my contract, I knew I couldn't get more money, but I'd say, well, can I have another week of vacation? And they'd say, great, it's not going to cost us anything. Uh, however, my boss, who seemed to always take vacations, uh, I was evidently too crucial. So I never was able to take all my vacation time. So I, even when they stopped, they made the rule that you can't carry over X amount of vacation. I had all this stuff grandfathered in that they couldn't take away. So basically when I was booted out of Disney, we lived off <laughs> my vacation money basically uh, for that first year. And then I did a, a video at Universal uh, of Rare Rabbit. Uh, nice. But the Hellboy thing is I was a true Hellboy fan. I know that fans would go to cons and they always smell that director producer. Oh yeah, I'm a great fan of such and such. And it's like, does that mean you just read the comics before you got the movie deal or whatever? But it's like, no, I was on Hellboy.com, uh, Dark Horse, and you know, got to know people on the board. Uh, and that group was actually divided, invited to the premiere of Guillermo's Hellboy. Uh, some of the people stayed at my house on the way to San Diego. I mean, I was in the Hellboy mythos. Um, anyway, that was uh, so I was there as a fan. Then we were doing a TV spinoff of Atlantis, with, which ultimately didn't go, but Mike had worked on Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And I basically, he'd read the script early on. And then after that, I would just tell him the story and he'd design a monster. And then, you know, to have his kind of feeling in, throughout the show. Um, so that was, that was my connection to Mike. I got to know Mike then. And then when I left Disney, I said, I have to, I need samples to show around to different kinds of shows. I said, do you mind if I do a couple of Hellboy stories? And he actually, you know, gave notes on the two scripts that I did. Uh, and then he said, I can't really give a lot of time to things that are just for your portfolio. But I was in his head as not only somebody he liked working with, but actually he saw how I would adapt Hellboy. Um, and then uh, I was interviewed at Cartoon Network for this is well, long, long ago, but one of the executives uh, wanted to do Bone, Jeff Smith's Bone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and as a series of, of movies or something. And wow. uh, he was in Atlanta, and he had um, the executive here, I'm blanking on, who's currently at Warner Brothers, <laughs> whatever. Uh, you know, and so I was being asked questions. It's like, it wasn't like I had a take on Bone. I, it was just like, get to know you. So the guy's asking questions and I'm just thinking, well, this isn't going to happen because he's not asking anything that could, could tell you how I would do a movie because it wasn't his project. But then the middle executive who knew me that was there said, well, you know, Tad, you know, worked on some Hellboy stuff with Mike. And the guy instantly shot up because <laughs> Hellboy, he wanted to do Hellboy on Cartoon Network. And that was his baby. And he wanted to do it. And I was already, stuff was already moving on it because um, I knew, for instance, that part of the deal is that the animated Hellboy could not look like Mike's Hellboy. They, mm -hmm. And the basic reason is if you put out a new toy and it looks like the Dark Horse Hellboy, Who's to say who gets the money there? It's so royalty. it's like it yeah, had yeah. to be a different design. Mm -hmm. I knew that yeah. going in, and the guy was like, "Oh, you know," he says, "I just thought, you know, we could practically just copy Mike's drawings and slide them down a, you know, almost describe yeah. the old Marvel superhero stuff." Mm -hmm. um, but I said no. But anyway, so when they had their first meetings, they ironed out. 
of the different groups. So Mike Cartoon Network and, and Revolution Studios, who I think had the, we did the first movies, uh, and IDW, no, ID, whatever, the animation company that was going to do it, who used to be at Film Roman, where I did. Oh, okay, yeah, Film Roman, sure. Uh, yeah, and uh, anyway, it was like, well, who should we have do this? And it's like four of the five people there said, well, Tad Stone should do it. And the yeah, other he people should. Went, who is this guy? <laughs> you know? And they actually called up one of my directors who worked on several shows with me. And the guy was kind of like, oh, I'm getting a call, you know, and getting a pitch. And the guy's a fantastic director, actually. Um, and it was to ask about me. <laughs> so oh, just okay, right. so ah, then he let that's me cool. So, so that's how, so I never had to, yeah, I never had to get into that thing about oh can you do that or not you know? right right in fact the only time it happened to me was the truck thing whereas i don't know if you can be violent enough <laughs> yeah you know? that's, that's awesome that's, that's I'll funny tell you violent. You need to see it yeah. that's funny because uh, when i was designing itty bitty hellboy i went through the same thing where i had to change i put I had to put shorts on hellboy so he would be <laughs> unique to that and then i had to change the color of the girl's hair to like a, a, a reddish purple. I had to change a lot of my designs. So <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah, man, Jesus, oh, there he is. Yeah. There's anybody help oh, yeah. 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 So that's why he wears shorts. He has little nubbins for uh, horns. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see this question here, uh, Ted? Uh, uh, Tamir is uh, curious if uh, you had an actor in mind for the voice of Lobster Johnson since he was teased at the end of the second Hel uh, Hellboy animated movie. I'm uh, pretty sure it did not because I mean those 40. characters lived in my head as as Mike's um, creation, yeah. so it was more about oh we're finally going to get to do Lobster Johnson. Uh, so it didn't I didn't think in terms of of casting back then. My favorite character in the Hellboy universe, Lobster Johnson, absolutely. Yeah. So now, Ted, oh, yeah. Ted, I was curious. I know you created a lot of things. You worked on a lot of characters, and you created Darkwing Duck. But do you have any? more characters do you still create characters do you carry a sketchbook and stuff and draw things all the time and doodle i do yeah. i'm actually these days well, was uh, these days i'm trying to learn how to paint so uh, oh, cool. nice. you know stuff like that and... no. <laughs> i'm agree. always curious i'm always curious what artists do when they're not working on their well, projects the, like what's your other stuff? i gotta say i gotta say that when i before i was retired i ended up retiring um a year early because it made more sense financially and i said yeah oh, okay uh which instantly took off that while i'm working on this job i gotta worry about finding the other job because yeah. they can relate my absolutely reasons, my jobs lasted for bigger projects but uh i was not built for a freelance life because of you know those first 30 years yeah of Disney. sure um as i said that that week after um uh, leaving Disney, it's like, it's Thursday, you put out your hand and nobody puts a check in it. It's like, what? Wait. <laughs> this yeah. doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um, where were we on that? Well, still drawing, drawing if you're still drawing it. Oh, 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 uh, anyway, so I thought about my, I thought about my retirement uh, and I just assumed, well, there's a couple of series that I pitched and I pitched them in different ways because I like the idea so much. Um, that, and I got permission to keep them. Uh, and I thought when I retire, I'm going to play around because I love comics. I did write and draw, although most of my career turned into, I started as an artist and basically moved into story. And then when I got to TV, I was writing scripts all the time, but I was drawing all the time, but it was notes or rough designs to give to another artist to do a better job of it. Uh, I just thought oh, I play with you know, comics. Uh, and I actually did a whole issue of one of the ideas, but my wife said, you can't spend 18 hours a day in that little room. And the little room means <laughs> yeah. the wall that way is about as far away as yeah. this wall is to me. Yeah. It's not a big place. Um, yeah, but your world is so only it, focused in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's your so, desk. Your anyway, desk. but I thought, yeah, I thought that, you know, I didn't trade a well-paying career in animation for a non-paying career in comics. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it was <laughs> also a bizarre yeah. thing. <laughs> it was also a bizarre thing because retirement is a different issue because mm -hmm. it's like I tended to think because of my career 
in terms of a series as opposed to, um, oh, I have this idea for a graphic novel, yeah. a single idea. Um, and I said, you know, if, wait a minute, if I, if, if I do this and it's a success, they might want me to do another one. Yeah, <laughs> it's like suddenly I would have a job again. It's You're like, out of retirement. No, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I actually played around. So I had a, I had two, one's a fantasy idea and the other is a science fiction idea. And all my cool. various, uh, if you go to like website, it's like if you scroll down far enough, you'll eventually hit all sorts of drawings. Um, but it was, uh, I started toying with it. Uh, I realized that the, the idea really, it was about these creatures that, that uh, they're like animal, vegetable, mineral. It was a science fiction thing and they could turn into any animal or turn into any mineral nice. or, or form of mineral. So it could be a diamond or granite or lava or dust. And, uh, and the same thing with the plant guy, you know, he could grow into a redwood or he could turn into pollen. You couldn't kill him because, you know, like, pollen. like the swamp thing. You know? Hey, Kate, grab him. Oh, uh, he got away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, easy. And, and those are all great things in animation. Yeah. The idea of a bad guy grabbing a guy and him turning into dandelion puffs, you know, would be yeah, great. Yeah, sneeze. Yeah. But to do that in a comic, <laughs> to, try to, to try to do that in a comic, it's like, you're just using up panels just to get those transformation stuff yeah. across until people really know the character. And then it's like, I guess, grab and poof. But even that's, it's just not as good as it would be an animated thing. So for a while I started playing around with, well, what if I did it more writing it in prose and then you turn the page and it would continue the story maybe in panels or here's a page that's half prose and half panels. And I realized, that's actually harder than doing either of the forms. And I oh. got to the, I got to a point where what if I just write it and heavily illustrate it, which I yeah. may go back to. But that's when I really got to the point where, wait a minute, at the core of this one anyway, is, is this visual thing that at its core, that is better suited for animation. Yeah. So I thought I would spend all my time writing in retirement. But the other thing that happened as opposed to, just working through that stuff is right when I retired was the first time I was invited as a guest to a comic convention, MomoCon <laughs> at, at nice. Um My friends like Glenn Keane, Ron Clemens, they want to see reaction to their work. They can go to a movie theater and they're sitting in an audience and they hear people laugh or cry or you know emote to what they've done. Sure. We had ratings which were very cold and way after the fact, or we got to do another <laughs> season and that was fun you know mm -hmm. uh yeah, but it we wasn't have comic that i had mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you have fans coming up and saying this is what it meant to me as a little kid right and I had, yeah. in the very first con i had yeah i had two two women come up and then they met each other and they, they each cried separately and they cried together mm -hmm. but <laughs> saying that basically their home life was very rough is oh. what i'll say okay. and and at the of Darwin is the bond between Darwin Duck and his adopted daughter. Mm -hmm. And I always made sure, I said, no, they love each other. They'll, because they're both extreme characters, they drive each other crazy, but you should never question their feelings for each other. We got great stories out of that. That's um, awesome. And that really meant a lot to them. And I, on the last day of the con, I was talking to this a dealer who had come over and she came over to say, you know, I never watched cartoons as a kid. And that's a weird thing to say to a guy with animation all around. To an animator, said, yeah. Except, yeah, she says, <laughs> except for Darkwing Duck. And wow. she goes, that's I good. watched that all the way through until uh, I went to high school. Wow. And I kind of told her what I just told you guys. And she said, huh, I guess maybe that's why. And it's kind of like... Uh, sorry, you had a crappy childhood. Glad I could help. You know, but anyway, you so you finally got to to meet fans. But the thing about you know, you're a guest. You get flown there. You get meals and stuff, and you have a table. Well, <laughs> Disney owns all my characters, so I right. can't make prints, or as I shouldn't oh, make prints anyway. Yeah, I don't. Right. But yeah. I thought I'll do original artwork, which still isn't necessarily kosher, but right. You know, and not that they're going to hunt down because Disney could shut down every 
comic convention there is with Absolutely. all the, if they wanted to yep. they have a perfect legal right to Between like star wars say, and marvel you cannot yeah. sell this mm-hmm. yeah exactly uh and disney for that matter yeah. um yeah. so anyway i knew it wouldn't be a problem but i just thought that's a line i'm not going to cross but that made me draw my characters from 30 years before over and over yeah. and over again and i posted them and some of my old crew said wow you've really gotten good and i said yeah, yeah maybe i should have done this 30 years ago when i was working with you guys um <laughs> but that really suddenly i'm drawing constantly and I'm interacting yeah. with fans because of my drawing and then so suddenly i went from writing with a little bit of drawing to drawing a lot with just a little bit of writing um and yeah, then you- like i say back la- into last year i started playing around with um uh I wanted to learn to paint. I was watching. I was yeah. James Gurney. James Gurney, who does Donatopia, those books. Yeah. Um, he has a hundred or more videos on YouTube about him painting and what he does, his philosophy, and he's got videos you can buy and all that. And uh, that really got me started. And finally, I I started with a watercolor sketchbook, and I'm trying to paint stuff uh, from life. Uh, and then I got to a point where I actually, because I was only an art major for one year, and then my <laughs> English teachers wanted me to move to English because of my writing, and I ended up saying, oh, this this humanities major is new, and it sounds like I could combine both, and somehow all the art I took was all 3D art, like ceramics and all that, which worked out because my ceramics teacher took over the art department, and I had to say, I Disney wants me to give them life drawings, and he gave me permission <laughs> to sit on a life drawing classes and help that because he loved Disney. He could do the goofy yell. So even that helped. <laughs> but uh, I didn't do painting and stuff like that. So I finally took an online course uh, because I had money from the convention. I could buy supplies without worrying about it. And I cool. could say, I'm going to take this course where the teacher actually interacts and looks at your stuff uh, just to make sure I go through this thing. And it yeah. was like, some of the stuff is things I would never, I would never think to draw a vase of flowers, stuff like that. But right. going through it, I learned enough that then I could have fun. And, and like I said, I had this convention money that would let me buy the quality paints and, and things yeah, like that. Suddenly you have cash so in that's your pocket. Currently that's currently what it's taking. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm going through now. I'm posting, but you'll see posts of, you know, Darkwing Chippendale and then. Oh, that's God's cool. Down an alley, you know. <laughs> what, I, so. what I found out too is like if you have this urge to create characters and you want to make everything with you want to make a movie, an animated series, comic book. What helps me is like I draw the character and put a description, almost like the Marvel Universe books used to do, and that's real satisfying uh-huh. to get the character down and their powers or their backstory. And I, always, I almost draw in a in like a style guide design. And then it's real satisfying if you just leave it at that. You know that you could base a story off of that little description. Sure. So that's that's real fun. That's kind of what you were saying. Where you just write stuff down. Well, you to- I got to say, the most fun thing in my career is working with the crews. I'm both artists oh. and writers. And, uh, uh, and, and spitballing stories and things like that. Mike Mignola. Yeah, that's good just stuff. Just a couple of days ago. He said, I rarely do commissions, but this is what I'm working on. And it was Batman. I saw the Batman with one, a right? giant, yeah. yeah, and with a giant Frankenstein with a distance yeah. out like that, <laughs> and a big alien brain floating above him. And uh, people said, Where'd you get this idea? And I said, Well, I'm actually the one. They were saying, What did the guy who commissioned you ask for? He says, Well, actually, the guy just said a bunch of things. They said, like, maybe, you know, Batman and a Frankenstein, you know, and monsters or werewolf and an alien brain. And here's how, again, Mike's head works. He said, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, wait a minute. If the alien brain was controlling the monster, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just like, and I commented on the thread. I said, I love that another artist would just say, sure, I can come up with a cool image of an alien fighting Batman with a monster. You, know, you could just do it. But Mike had to have a reason they were there. Right. And that, sense. I said, yeah. so, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. And I said, that could be, the, you know, that's like saying the aliens had uh, 
are another interdimensional and they're looking they need a body to you know they need a way to interact with our um, <laughs> society and they stumble on this frankenstein experiment and maybe that alien that portal was opened up by a secret society doing occult rituals and all that uh i said i love that and Mike said, well, I didn't think that hard about it. <laughs> but I just I just love that all Mike had to do is alien, you know, had this great drawing. He says the, you know, here's the alien controls the monster. And me knowing his work, thought, oh, Victorian society there, and this is stuff he's done in his comics where yeah. he very much blends the idea of the occult with the ancient ones, which are supernatural, yep. also alien. And just combine that, I miss that sort of thing of just start with a little idea or a character description like you were saying and yeah, just yeah. saying oh 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 that's how it would work and it just how things fit together it's like a puzzle and in Story fact builder. yeah with the with the paintings i've been trying and again i'm just learning but i mean they're landscape stuff you know um, oh, cool. okay i i i know what you should be looking for in terms of composition and, and stuff like that and i I should be doing it outside, but because of COVID and everything else. And, uh, it's like, I'm going to go out with my camera in the afternoon when the light's coming from the side, and that should be good. And I got a picture of this alleyway. And I said, okay, well, that has shadows going across and all that. I came back, and I went, why do I want to paint an alley? And it was like this pivotal moment of, uh, and it's like, I bought a lot of stuff. I better do this still. Uh but I be, just this idea came to me, and now if I know where it is, I All right. show it. Oh, I want to see. Cool. <laughs> wow. This is great. Man. I want to see this. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I see, this is a, ma this is a master class in Ted Stone. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, this is this is where we we hang out with Ted when we're in San Diego, man, and we we love seeing him. Absolutely, mm -hmm. this is great. Yeah, except that w the one I need is not here. You'll have to go to my website. Well, uh, you can paint it on air if you want. You know, <laughs> is it is it tadstones.com? Uh, no, I'm not that important. Just if you go on, that's ridiculous. I have it. Oh, <laughs> it's it's because I'm doing another painting. It's standing in front of me on a pallet. No problem. So, oh, don't don't ruin it. Yes. So this is like a truck. How do I how do I <laughs> isolate him, Francis, so we can see him? Uh, just click on his. Uh, uh, there's a little large icon. In, in okay, so I did box. this. Hold on, hold on, Ted. I I'm did a get picture. Of, okay, it's Where's, gonna make you large. Yeah. Oh, is it on? It's on his thing. I see it. Yes. Um So I just okay. do it. Like here we go. So I was doing. Oh, I was nice. doing the alley, and I don't know. I don't know where the idea came from, but I just thought, well, what if somebody was passing by the alley? Yeah. Oh, I see it. I see the arm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, that's oh, excellent. I love it. So that was just like okay, now I can have fun with that. Yeah, I was thinking of that's the next cool. One. But see, that's the, story, of... that's the storyteller in you, and and yes, well, like, yeah, I, have I was to looking at like that all the time. I was looking at Western art, and uh, I thought, oops, sorry, I was no looking at Western out, and I I was thinking, what if? And I was looking at some great, like James Reynolds is this fantastic artist. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, he here was a cowboy, just kind of sitting with a herd as they're moving across. I said, what if they were a herd of giant bees? And I plotted out this picture of doing that. And then I realized, because this is the sketchbook I work in, it's just a tiny thing. And I said, I should see if I could do one bee. And so, Ooh. there you go. Yeah, That's beautiful. That, you know, just playing around with that. Uh, so that's terrific. That's He's just time. playing around. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, saw, I, I don't want you to put so it I mean, up. This want is to, actually, but... I mean, here is like, oh, well, let's see one more. That's Hold like on. a normal painting, which I, I like doing. Right. Uh, yeah. I, kind of a break to it. It's like, okay, those are the kind of shadows I do. It's like, would it be better with a Godzilla in the background? Maybe. <laughs> now, <laughs> now on, the, on, on the other side, you have some writing. Is that notes for you to remember what to do? Or is that part of the story that you're coming up with? for the painting no no i don't do, no the uh it's basically because i'm hard on myself um and it's kind of just saying this is what i was trying to do in this painting just kind of like if i survive a few years uh <laughs> going back and saying oh yeah this is why is it's almost like my wife does genealogy and mm -hmm. it's 
it's that thing of what if somebody finds this in the future, you know, right. and hopefully it doesn't get tossed out by the kids as they're going through my stuff, you know, with the, with my Superman number one. Um, yeah, got another sketchbook. Anyway, right it's just kind of nuts myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do have a, I do have a blog and it's because when I was doing the Hellboy animated things, um, I was actually, they bought the, uh, website for me um or actually i take it back they had me buy it and then they reimbursed me and it was uh hellboy animated at type pad if you look if you do hellboy wow. animated animation veteran type pad you'll probably find it and what it was what's cool about it and i've actually continued paying for this every year because to me it's an archive of an animated of animation development while it was happening every week i would say here's where we are in hellboy and here's what we're thinking of doing here's our design philosophy and i remember i had a post i did about retakes when there's mistakes and you send it back to the studio with notes and people said that was fascinating we've never heard of that before it's like well it's kind of a boring thing but okay mm -hmm. uh anyway i had so much fun doing that when i left those projects i said i'm going to do my own one so it's a spin-off of that it's called just a tad but again, oh, it's nice. on type. <laughs> oh, um, and my thought was, I'm going to, you know, as I work on different projects, I'll do the same thing. Well, the problem is when you're working for somebody else on their projects, um, they don't let you put stuff online until right. it's on the yeah. air. It's the opposite yeah. of what I had of Hellboy. So I did things, I did general posts, and then it just petered out. I, it was like a cobweb site. Um, and then finally, last year, I said, I'm going to make this, and because I even titled it kind of a, a, a creative process type of thing. And I now talk about, I post where there was dark wing images or um, character shots or these paintings. I now basically, I don't know who I'm talking to, but it's because not that many people follow. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's basically saying, this is what I was trying to do. This is where I think I failed. This is what I hope to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. Um, just documenting it for no good reason. But it's I, I talk to enough young artists that it, it helps them to say, here's a guy who had a long career, and he's still second guessing his creative choices. And wow. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and it's like you learn you know, you always try to get better. It's like, I, yeah. I've i worked with, and very, not very long, <laughs> but I've worked with like writers who felt like they knew everything. And those are never as good as the guys who are always right. looking for a way to learn, uh, you know, a different course they take in writing or something like that. Or, oh, I'm doing this, uh, this course in detective fiction. It's like, the guy's not gonna write detective stories, but it's just a whole different type of writing that he wanted to yeah. explore. It's like, that's to me, no matter what age you are, that you're looking for a different thing to do. Now, I miss, the, just like when I went through that Hellboy thing about the alien and all that, it's like, oh, that was fun. And that only took five minutes or less. <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, it is kind of like, is there a way to do that? You know, and right. and again, my, my tendency these days would just say, um, you know, it would be to write something because that goes fast, but heavily illustrated, maybe with paintings. But and it's it's one of those things where do I publish it? Do I just put it out on right. Kindle or you know, you know? Again, there's you really can put stuff online. You can give it to an audience for free yeah. if you want to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And again, I'm in a lucky position where uh, I'm not hurting for money um, just because. I'm old enough that I actually have like an industry pension. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty you good. Know, yeah. that it's like that doesn't happen and never happened in the comics. Not anymore. Uh, yeah, man. Um, so I'm very lucky in that way. It's not like I'm scrambling for it. Who knows what the future will bring? Um, but, you know, I rather just, it's you write something to have other people read it. You right. know, you draw, sure, you draw for yourself. But in this business, you're storytellers. You're right. making a comic book. You're making a cartoon because I've got a story to tell. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I loved, I love telling stories and making stories. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. 
so so no right now i'm not working on it. i've got all these other characters i've played with um but it's i'm not doing anything with them right now right now i'm i'm basically uh working on this new skill set i want to yeah. develop yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah, that's it's cool. not unless like I say, unless I do the giant bee kind of thing, it's like it's not the same kind of storytelling. <laughs> but I got to say, part of it is sometimes a because uh, I say, why do people keep painting hillsides, you know, or something like that? And you realize, oh, if you're trying to capture a certain kind of a light or certain colors, it's like a puzzle, which to me is what storytelling was. It's like I've got these personalities, and and uh, I rarely had a story where I started with theme or something like that mm -hmm. you might have to analyze it and say well what is the theme of this or what is the character trying to learn but it's it's how things piece together how these two personalities will interact uh mm -hmm. and to me that was the, the fun yeah. thing is in those series it's like saying i've got this personality who's the worst person to have in his life oh a little girl who refuses to stay at home yeah there you go who won't go to bed he's a superhero <laughs> yeah exactly he's a superhero and she's a handful he loves her very much she refuses to say it all mm -hmm. i, I yeah. found a great image uh Ted, <laughs> of uh darkwing duck and this shows you where the merchandising was back in the day so how about that mm. the carnation <laughs> kids <you> <laughs> Mr. Roni yeah. and cheese. Ooh, Mr. Roni, yes, yeah, that's that. a different flavor. <laughs> that's actually yeah. a nice piece of artwork. We, you know, so at first somebody person. just showed me a some just showed me a, a Hot Topic has a new Darkwing T-shirt, and it's one of those things. Great that you're still doing it. It's literally been thirty years. Next year, twenty twenty. Congratulations! Darkwing's that's amazing. Birthday anniversary. Bro. That's not that kids are grown uh, up. He and Wonder Woman have the same year, so he'll never get That's noticed cool. at the convention. <laughs> um, no, no, no. But yeah, anyway, you know, the the uh, it, it's they're still using images off the original model sheet. They just like move them around. They don't even put them in like size relationships. And it's just like, <laughs> couldn't you pay somebody to maybe do? one or two new drawings you know yeah. <laughs> seem to sell a lot of t-shirts so well and that's the sweet spot that's now it. especially for the 30th anniversary because now adult fans and I, obviously you've already been experiencing it at conventions and and honestly scoot and mike are uh are you know yeah. uh, grew up with your stuff and everything you know i mean they can well, they can talk as viewers yeah. and everything oh the yeah. the uh i always say the nostalgia window moves along because mm -hmm. now people are starting to ask for drawings more of Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Yes. That. Yeah. I usually don't do Aladdin or um, Hercules and stuff like that. And people say, why don't you? You know, those would sell a lot. I said, because they're really hard to draw. <laughs> 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 and two, I those were created by my friends. That's Ron and John's characters. They're okay. not mine. I, I technically did more minutes of animated aladdin than they did like multiple times but it's still they made the creation whereas darkwing chip and dale those are those are guys we recreated them in a in a new universe um as with buzz lightyear's team buzz wasn't ours but the guys that we put with him uh it's kind of like oh do i have to learn to draw those but again seriously with the virus and all that I'm, not going to any cons this year and who knows mm -hmm. next yeah. year i the last con i went to was a very small one in long beach at the beginning of the year in january mm -hmm. um and you know i had people come up to my table it was no big deal the previous one i did in moscow russia wow it was in october when i was getting ready for it they told me well we want we think you should draw for four hours and then sign autographs for two hours i'm going None of this made sense to me. It was like, well, no, people line up my table. Do you want me to come over to your table to make a bigger deal out of it? Because I'm thinking of San Diego. You you leave your table. You go over to the Dark Horse booth, and you sign things at the Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. They said, no, 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 no. And finally, I just said, you know what? You guys are the experts. I'll do whatever you say. And they, from thousands of miles away, I could, I could hear their, oh, I go there. Instead of a single artist table, there are four tables. They have blown up my artwork to a 
poster that is, I'm not going to exaggerate. I want to say like the Berlin Wall, 10, 10, <laughs> 10 feet tall. <laughs> a little after their time, yeah. uh, like a movie screen. That's huge. Mm -hmm. There are three other people working the tables down there, and what they explained to me is when the Iron Curtain fell, the first cartoons mm -hmm. they had ever seen uh, from the West were DuckTales, Chippendales, Rescue Rangers, Darkwing, wow, uh, cool. and strangely, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Wow. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but before that, they didn't have serialized animation. They had great stories, but real limited animation, but they'd like be Russian fairy tales. So they'd just be a one-time thing. There was no ongoing series. Sure. And suddenly, these cartoons came in, and they said, every child of that generation watched your cartoons. It was mm -hmm. called, here it was the Disney Afternoon. There it was the Disney Club. It was on weekends. And they would watch those shows. And then people would have bootleg tapes that they would sell at kiosks. <laughs> and this wasn't... In, in that country, it wasn't illegal. So, so, no, you did that often with TV shows. So That's kids what you did. Over yeah. and over and over mm -hmm. again. Uh, wow. So I was there. Batwoman told me. No, Batgirl. Uh, a cosplayer came up. I noticed. I, I oh, great costume. She comes swooping in as I'm in the middle of this line that's out the door. Um, and she drops off these fancy chocolates. And it's, it's like mixing <laughs> genres. But... Who is that mask girl? I wanted to thank her. Um, <laughs> she evidently got back in line, and I I talked to her when she got back up front, and then I said, are you sure? I, afterwards, uh, on the internet, she claimed she was in line for five hours wow. to have me, and I didn't charge for autographs or anything. I would do little sketches. They had I was brought over there by a, a comics company, Bubble Comics, and I had done a variant cover for one of theirs with ducks uh so they were selling that <laughs> they made a poster out of that and um all my stuff sold every i brought i brought over inktober sketches that i did of just pumpkins and things and those things sold <laughs> uh every just clean me out uh and people would come up and and like i'd be standing with them and they'd be shaking and right, for a right. while, they said, the line is so long that wow. we need you to, what if you just stay seated and they come around behind you, we'll take the picture. And wow. I said, I let them make the spiel. And then I said, no. And I, <laughs> and I said, not only is it good for me to stand up constantly, but I said, when I stand up with them and pose in front of the big poster, I said, that's when they talk to me. And they oh. tell me how much this meant to them yeah. and what they did or yeah, they're a president great. of a fan that's club great. and that sort of thing. That's great. And that. then one of the nights, these two I didn't see him come up, but two cops came up. And one guy is like this, you know, this <laughs> brick wall moving down, except incredibly Giant handsome. Guy. This wavy hair comes <laughs> in and is, you know, in this fur-lined jacket. And he comes up and evidently they came up and they said, when will you guys be? closing up and the guys got very nervous because the police are here in the convention and they said oh right at 6 30 it closes down and it, and you know they were trying to say that everything's and they said no 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 we just want an autograph and they said, oh, we'll bring you to the front and they said no people don't like the police enough we don't want them to we'll wait line um, i was waiting for a duck they, and, duck and i just <laughs> wish i wish i had gotten a picture of me with them to go with the story but they got pictures and everything but uh, that was, and that's what they said. They said, "See, every person in that generation saw that's that." That's beautiful, man. So that was, if that has to be my second to last convention, you know, great because mm -hmm. yeah. when you get a visa there, they tell you to get a business visa, which is good for three years, and they say, okay. we'd love to have you back. And I said, you know what? That means my last year on the visa is 2021. That's Darkwing's 30th. We come yeah. back. But that's a good way. That's a good mic right drop. Now, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's well, like open, right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the idea of traveling on an airplane anywhere, yeah. but Russia has it right now. Right. And, you know, again, we're in first wave. This is not the second wave. This is still the first wave. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're still. And, and as they said, where the experts said, oh, yeah, it'll actually be a little lighter in the summer. 
because of the heat dries up droplets and all that. Yeah. It's like, okay, if this is light, wait till the fall comes. And yeah. Just, yeah. You know, <laughs> wait. And that's so how again, well, this, may, this may be the convention experience of Tad Stone. <laughs> is it? Uh, We're at a yeah. convention right this now, is, yeah. This well, is Tad, um, as John said, the Skoke and I kind of grew up with Darkwing Duck. I know for me, I was 11, I think, when the show premiered. Wow. And I grew up with the Disney afternoon blocks also, there. By but, the way, he's, he's 12 oh, yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But Darkwing exactly. Duck, especially because he was a superhero and I was into superheroes. Well, a crime fighter, technically. But um, <laughs> uh, so thank you because he was a big influence. The show was a big influence on the stuff I currently do. But I think what, um, like, what drew me to like Darkwing Duck specifically and then I transitioned into Batman, the animated series, words and in, in the comics too, the uh, rogues gallery that Darkwing had and Steelbeak oh, yeah. being one of my favorite <laughs> villains. And as you mentioned early on, it started out as Double O Duck, and you could definitely see that Steel Beak kind of fit into that um, well, was Jaws, James yeah. Bond. Yeah. yeah, but also like mm -hmm. characters like Bushroot, who was a villain, and the Liquidator. But you kind of felt bad for those guys, and I thought you guys did a good job of uh, more mature storytelling, even from Ducktales. Like Darkwing Duck was kind of like an evolution of those those Disney shows. So I was just curious, what was your favorite villain to write in that time? My favorites are uh, Megavolt and Bushroot. Because mm. somehow there's such an effect. Bush just wants to be leave, yeah. be left alone. He tried to grow his own wife. He couldn't help yeah. it that she turned into a vampire. <laughs> yeah. potato, you know? um, it was the but and, and and Megavolt was so crazy, so insane. There were times when he'd work work with Darkwing and always yeah. throw him over at the end. But uh, Dan Castellaneta, who does his voice, was just so fantastic at that. Yeah. Um, you know, you remind me of, t of two things. One, uh, going back to Russia thing, you love Darkwing because he was, you know, crime fighter, superhero yeah. kind of thing, playing with those tropes. To Russia, they explained to me, they said, for us, it wasn't a parody because they didn't have superheroes before mm -hmm. that. So take all the kind of Warner Brothers wild wow. humor, yeah. the crazy inventions, but then imagine that you've never heard about Batman's Rogues Gallery. Yeah. And here's this guy has these yeah. crazy villains that yep. are there and these and these weird ideas of super evolved heads or, you know, you know, it's like all the science fiction stuff just on the level of, of once upon a time, here's a story that hit them you yeah. know, on top yeah. of all the superhero stuff. The other thing, just real quick, and I, story is out there but he was called double o duck he was developing double o duck he went through all sorts of different permutations he was not based on a ducktales episode with scrooge mcduck where he was a superhero there were guys working at disney at the time who assumed that but it was it was up to jeffrey katzenberg jeffrey katzenberg ordered me to develop a show called double o duck he liked the name so it can't be launchpad who did the ducktales episode of that uh, so I did a parody version. He hated it. I didn't like it. <laughs> luckily, luckily, he told me to do it again. We're now recently. I thought, wait, the usual thing is to say I'll get somebody else to do it. But that, at, at a story brainstorming meeting, uh, guys looked at the Dwayne Capizzi, who did like Men in Black TV show, and, and Alf was one of his shows. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Dwayne said, boy, look, he's this character in a mask and a cape and a tuxedo. He reminds me more of a pulp hero. Yeah. Um, like, like, and that, yeah. like the Green the Hornet and the Shadow. Shadow. And and that, the Shadow, absolutely. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was not old enough to have experienced those, except through fandom. I heard tapes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Loved yes. All that stuff. So that suddenly said, oh, here's a different way of building a, a, a team to help this guy that isn't the James Bond typical things. Now that team kept shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Became before it became the story of a father and a daughter and a launch pad. Um, <laughs> anyway, but, but that was there. He's called Double O Duck. We instantly Cubby Broccoli, who is the producer who did all those, you know, Sean Connery Bond films, right. um, had the rights, and they said, and Disney has already made Cloisonate Hens, had sold the show in many markets. They said, we own Double O. It's not a thing. Ian Fleming invented it. Wow. So you can't, you can't use that name. So we had a contest because once you've been using a name, I am i can't think in a different way. Yeah, it's I tough. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Producing the show. Um, we had a contest. My very cheap boss 
actually uh, <laughs> amazingly said, we'll give $500 to whoever comes up with the name. Oh, and cool. back in 91, that was, yeah, that was a lot money. of money. Even like $500 is a lot of money. But yeah. Um, anyway, and everybody came up with alliteration, dead shot, duck, dead eye, duck, you know, doofus duck. It just, <laughs> until finally one person came up with Darkwing. I loved it. I said, that's what he thinks he is, but I'm going to yeah. put duck with it because that's the silly side. Yeah. That guy was Alan Burnett. Oh, Alan yeah. Burnett Batman. got $500 and a few months later left to go to Warner's, Warner's. and oh, be cool. the story editor of, of the animated Batman yeah. show. So, that's, wow. I just had him on the show two months oh, ago. You didn't, yeah. Yeah. You didn't yeah. yeah. You don't know how deep no. the Darkwing went. That's outstanding. Wow. You thought you got away from Darkwing, but. You know, yeah, one of yeah, the coolest right, things but, about Darkwing too was like his vehicles, the, like the rat catcher, the motorcycle, and he had that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, what was the plane called that looked like his face? The the, the jet. Thunderquack. Oh, yeah, all that, that was awesome. from, again. <laughs> when when I was a kid, yeah, growing up with these comics, that was the era of the Batmobile, yeah. which yep. had the big fin in the back, yeah, and yeah, the head on the front, and then yeah. there's a bat copter that had a bat head on the front, yep. and it's like. You that know, Batman was like couldn't, the coolest couldn't vehicle, do a yeah. piece of equipment without his face on it. So they I they had a Darkwing Duck figures back then too. The action figures, Darkwing's hat would spin if you did a thing. But they had the Thunderquack, yeah, yeah. and we could never find it. So I tried to build one out of cardboard, and I wish I still <laughs> had the picture because I it had like the hatch that could open. But that was like my favorite thing to draw, favorite thing to to look at. It was oh, I just thought great. that was brilliant. Yeah, I love like, these guys on YouTube. <laughs> There's I'm, guys on yeah, YouTube love who have it. built a flying thunderquack that's oh, radio controlled. Really? That actually wow. flies. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll have to look that up. Kevin Big the, the gas gun was the best thing. He always wanted one. Yeah. 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 The gas gun I love, was cool. I love that we got the exclusive that Alan Burnett uh did the Batman show as a ripoff of Darkwing Duck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> but it's yeah. weird. He's yeah, back yeah. to writing. He's back to writing to Batman too. Yeah. That's right. exactly yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. He's writing That's Batman hilarious. again right now, isn't he, John? He's writing. Yeah, Batman they're doing the digital. Comic. Yeah, yeah. Alan, and, really? Alan and Paul oh, really? yeah. are, yeah. are doing mm -hmm. the digital uh, Batman comic. It's definitely the animated That's series cool. designs, and yeah. Ty Templeton oh, is uh, drawing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's wow. Oh, they're going He's back perfect, to the old yeah. school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah home cooking. Yeah. Absolutely. Home cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that better than old you school. Said, you said something at the beginning, Ted, and I wanted to go back to it. Did you say that you designed some Epcot rides, or 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 did I miss I worked on the. Yeah, I went over to uh, to work on Epcot because I had done a, a animated uh, educational film called Health and Alcohol Abuse oh, uh, yeah. that I used old word Kimball characters, actually, of a caveman, the voice of reason and uh, emotion. Uh, anyway, Epcot was basically <laughs> supposed to be the same kind of thing, edu edutainment. Sure, uh, yes. Why? Somebody thought it was a good idea. <laughs> um, anyway, so I went over there and I worked, uh, like I said, fantastic time with Ward Kimball, uh, working on the world of motion, which was kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean, except going through the story of transportation. It's no longer there. Uh, <laughs> then I worked with Tim Delaney on the Space Pavilion. Uh, wow. You'll notice there is no Space Pavilion, oh. but I did get to meet George Lucas. Uh, that nice. was oh, fun. Especially... I, we had one luncheon the first time he was there, uh, and we had it in a conference room, and it was fried chicken. I remember, here's all these executives, Ron Miller, <laughs> Walt's, Walt's son-in-law, says, no, here we eat the chicken with our fingers and all that. It's like, cool. Do you have hot That's sauce? I would do. But I, no. Oh, <laughs> but right. here's the Harold. thing. I, I sit down, and I'm right across from George Lucas, and everybody else is like, except for Tim, is like, too cool for the room. They're all older. And I said, I'm sorry, but all my friends in animation would kill me if I don't ask you about Star Wars. He said, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. He told me that there were nine stories, where <laughs> later he denied it. He said there was just six. He said there was nine stories. And he said, and this is, he didn't mean it in the same way, but he said, nobody will like the first three. <laughs> he, wow. And, and because he said that's going to be a, like a political drama um and then he said and then we wait till mark hamill is aged up enough that he'll be like an obi-wan character in the in the last three um and that's so i always remember that at the uh the 
the funny thing, you know, years later, I'm thinking, you know, if you're actually saying nobody will like the first three and you haven't even written them, maybe you could write them in a way that people would like yeah, them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, make them good. Maybe, yeah. maybe raise that bar a little bit when you're writing. Yeah. Uh, no, that was great. And then after that, the, the you know, the, the pavilions had to be sponsored and no space company like Northrop or whoever had the money to blow on a, on a pavilion in, in Florida. Uh, and then I got to work with Tony Baxter, one of the top designers at Disney World and Disneyland. Uh, and Tony designed Thunder Mountain and, and the whole line of Fantastic Rides. So I worked with him on the Imagination Pavilion. And, you know, we did, uh, Figment was already uh, invented visually and, and the idea of, of his character. But I worked on him and just again very much in a disney way it wasn't all writing it was like drawing ideas it was building little things on a model it was you know that was a kind of a great time a great experience there and then i left and i remember tony saying uh because i didn't i didn't stay with the transportation ride and work to see it built instead i went to the space thing and then i went to imagination and they called me back i was supposed to do these epcot documentaries um and, you know, Tony said, oh, you're missing the fun part. You know, this is when you get to build the ride. Well, I had left, it wasn't that long after that, now that we sold it, it's like, this ride is way too much like Disneyland. We have to make it more Epcot. Uh, the ride came out great, but it was kind of like, it didn't fit in with the rest of the park. It was it's too fun. So it was mostly <laughs> <Matt Baker. laughs> so, uh, And Figment was like one of the most popular characters of the park. They tried taking yeah. him out. They had to put yeah. him back in. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, oh. That was a fun time. But uh, he used yeah. to be Blue Green, but the Sherman Brothers wrote the song and they wanted to rhyme. They wanted to call him Purple Pigment. So he became mm -hmm. purple and purple became a big color in my career. So yeah, yeah purple. <laughs> I like purple. Yeah. I was trying to think of the Sherman Brothers' names earlier when you were talking about like Little Mermaid and and making songs to fit the scenes and everything. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if you know uh, Ted, but uh, the Harley Quinn animated adult cartoon uh, just wrapped up its second season, and they had a great under the sea parody that they made. Oh, that's cool! And, I haven't oh, seen that because I don't have the DC Universe thing. But that the uh, director and I think she's also a producer on that show. Uh, Jen Coyle was actually my director when I was on Bob's Burgers, and <laughs> Jen worked for me on the Hellboy animated shows. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Um, and then I actually did a pilot when I was there. That was a uh, for Disney Junior, uh, and Jen was so by day I worked for her as, when she was a director on Bob's Burger, and by night she worked for me on this pilot I did. I had that we produced. <laughs> That's cool. But no, I've heard it's cool. just fantastic. I hear nothing but awesome things about it. So. Would you ever as you as you learning and, and doing oil painting and stuff, um, God, I, you know, and as a broadcaster, the fact that software exists and I could have my home studio as opposed to when I was a kid thinking, all right, if I save like 10 grand, I can build a home studio and everything. And now yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I can just open a laptop and do what I want to do. Would it ever interest you to do your own animation with software, or is it like, no, I already did that. Thanks anyway, not interested. Um, two things. One, I do gouache painting. It's like water-based. And what I liked about it is like, it's basically an undo button. You can paint over things. You can't see them anymore. <laughs> sure. And it dries. It dries in a few minutes. It's because the oil paints take a long okay. time to cure, I guess. Uh, so I have no experience in oil. Uh, but in animation, every once in a while, it's like, and there's some now out there, it was like, I would like a very, very simple program just to animate on the level of flip book. But usually that passes pretty quickly because way back at the beginning of my career, you know, I was there to be an animator. And uh, the way you got ahead, once you made it through the, the testing period, you were just an in-betweener. And then you had to do um, scenes in your spare time to go in front of the review board to try to move up. And uh, we saw movieolas in our rooms there. And I was like, we had seen some screening of stuff. And I said, well, that's not far off of things. I kept coming up with better ideas. So it's like, I put this project aside and then do another one. And again, that's all in your spare time or I get too ambitious and whatever. And um, uh, 
I had an old test on the Moviola and the manager of the department came by and I said, hey, Ed, look at this for a second. I said, I've got this old test. I'm thinking, is this worth finishing up and showing to the review board? And he looked at it and he said, that's great. He said, you don't have to finish up, just show it as is. And I said, really? Oh, that's great. Feeling pretty good. And he goes, yeah, we had, we had kind of given up on you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's, it's kind of like, you think that could have come up in like a six month review or something? <laughs> yeah. You mentioned like, hey, are you going to do a personal test? Uh, you know, but they just thought, oh, I guess it's not going to work out. You know, he's just that guy who talks a lot. Uh, <laughs> I showed the test. I think I moved up to assistant animator, but which was great. I actually have one little scene in the rescuers. Uh, cool. But that's when I realized that analyzing what I had done, it's like, oh, I was having more fun coming up with what the characters did than making them do it, which I still was enjoyable to me. I, I still love just flipping pages on a, on a drawing board to watch them anime. Um, and that's why I said, oh, that's story. And in Fox and Hound, I got to move into story and work with stuff and I did a couple of sequences. But that was back in the time where there was like six title cards for credits and Credits were kind of at the whim of directors. I worked for the old director, and he was moved off, and the new guys came in. So uh, I didn't get credit there. It didn't bother me until they decided to give credit to a fictitious worm. <laughs> the credits came up, and it's like squeaks as himself. And it's like, really? Because you're just talking about a little space and a thing. And I actually did work on this, you know. So crazy. I eventually That's got funny. over it. You can tell from my voice, right? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I bounce all around Disney. It's like every year, year and a half, I actually found myself in a different job or sometimes a different part of the company to the extent where I think there was times where they didn't know what to do with me. And luckily, they didn't show me the door then. Uh, and then I got in TV animation where my show basically changed every year and a half, two years one year or I was in development and stuff like that. And it just suited me more to be coming up with a lot of ideas for a lot of different stories than um, working on one story for, you know, three years, four years. Sure. Uh, on the other hand, every time a feature came out done by my friends, it was like, oh, should I have stayed a feature? And like, who knows if I had survived there? Because I, I look at a lot of guys who were in story back then at the beginning who didn't, they ended up leaving. So, Ted, can I uh, uh, can I throw a name at you? I'm wondering if you might have worked with this animator during your time at Disney. His name was Ron Husband. Did you ever work with yeah. him, Ron? Okay. Yeah, I know Ron. Yeah. Well, I, I came Ron. in, I want to say, year or two after me, something like that. I, he was really nice to me. I was uh, just a couple of years out of college and I was an aspiring animator. I was out in LA visiting a friend and... Um, uh, uh, a friend of ours connected us with Ron and set up a meeting with, with the three of us at, I, I want to say it was Disney TV animation at that building. Um, but Ron took about an hour and just talked with us about what he does in his job because both of us really wanted to be animators. So it was a big deal for us to be able to talk with somebody who was doing the work we wanted to do. And it was really nice of Ron to take the time to, to talk with yeah. us. So, you know, you talk about uh, leaving notes for future generations and, and having a blog and sharing your process. You never know who you're going to be inspiring. So I think it's great that you do oh, that. Oh, yeah. I actually yeah, brought I, up and, I brought up the website uh, to add to the show, and unfortunately, it knocked me out of the uh, of the broadcast. So I'm gun shy about trying to do it again because oh, I, you know. No but anyway, go on. You were you were about to. I mean, if, if people, if basically, if people want to see my work, and uh, generally wherever I'm online, I'm under my name. So whether it's Facebook or Instagram, if you look for Tad Stones. Um, you'll stumble on me. <laughs> and also for the chat, I'll, I will put the URL. Answer. Yeah. I'll put the URL in for your for the Hellboy uh, blog, the type pad. Oh, great! Type thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing like that right I say, now. There's, there's the there's the Hellboy, and then just a tad is also on type pad, and it's got a weird. I can't just give you a, a website address because I think it starts with Hellboy Animated. But <laughs> again, if you search within it, you'll you'll find it. Oh yeah, you'll find it. Uh, so yeah, all my artwork, what I'm doing on whether it's 
it's Disney stuff or um, my paintings is going to be on Instagram. Facebook is pretty much the same thing. Twitter, kind of the same I, thing. I, I, I realize a lot of times I realize I'm on those things all the time, but I realize, oh, I don't post that much. So it's yeah, like yeah. I go to post something, I realize that was my last post, you know. There he is. And, uh, <laughs> Mighty Mike's back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had this. Uh, uh, yeah. I had this character that I just uh, that I was inspired from this. Oh yeah, podcast, and I want to show them to you. Hold on, I'm gonna isolate yeah, make you, him son. make him big. All hey. right, oh, there he is. <laughs> All right. Nice. He's Tad. His name's Darkwing Tad. He can draw in the dark. That's a superpower, and he make things move. That's what he could do. Oh, I like yeah, that. that's him. And here he is, close up. Give me, ah! five hundred, give me five hundred bucks, and I'll name him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's outstanding. Are we keeping you from dinner, Chad? I realize it's seven o'clock yeah. your time. Oh, maybe for a while. I mean, honestly, we we love this. We're hanging on every word. This is this is the best and most quiet. Oh yeah, podcast. I, yeah. I think we've ever experienced, <laughs> and truly, it's been a delight. Because seriously, man. We're, you're you're I mean, people telling don't, amazing people are get, stories. People are going to get pissed off. They're going to say, wait, I tune in for guys talking all over each oh, other and yelling. Oh, and this is an interview show. Yeah. <laughs> no, this, is pretty, yeah. this is great for us because unlike you, this is what we're banking on for our pension. So yeah. <laughs> we, we, can, we can stay here for like five or six hours. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. If oh, you yeah. have to go, yeah. please. You know, uh, Ted, uh, in August, and I will ask you on the air, and, and you don't have to answer, but I want you to think about it. I'm going to do an online con called Mainframe Comic Con, and I know they would love to have uh, like a panel with you talking about Darkwing and these and these kinds of stories and stuff. And I can give you more information and and you know text it to you. But sure. I just wanted to kind of put it in your head. August fifteenth and sixteenth, and it's it's going to yeah. be a great show. And a lot of a yeah. lot of uh, it's just like a regular convention. A lot of uh, live action actors and animation people, and of course comic book people and. God, they're getting incredible uh, guests and everything. So Johnny, Johnny's trying to poach our guests good. again. It's awesome. So I'm putting Great you on the spot. Man. I just <laughs> want you to think about it. So. See, okay, and, yeah. and there you go, man. Look at this. Honestly, like Wayne is. I mean, and we're not we're not saying goodbye if you want to hang out. But yeah, honestly, man, wow. you can tell everybody's loving. Uh, <laughs> Wayne, Wayne wants you to get angry. Kick it, yeah. Ted. No, he's not stories, bad man. this time. Let's throw me off. We don't have so, angry yoga chips. Hold on. So yeah. Oh, here we have to. Oh wait, hold on, Mike. Hold on, Mike. There you go. Yeah, that's better. There you go. You try oh, roasting vampires. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's about to give me the third degree or kill vampires. One of the two. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. So yeah, I mean, again, if you're hungry, uh, we'll no let you go. But... I was oh, you know yeah, what? Should, you know, um, yeah, I was going to say. Let's see. I can't let's see what's behind can't it. Do, I can't pick up the computer and like carry it closer. No, but These I'm going to say, yeah, do it. Oh, there they are. These yeah. are. Yeah. The tall ones are all. Um, I guess I can do this. Uh, the tall <laughs> ones are all maquettes that were made by Kenny Tompkins, who is one of our character designers. Nice. And as he went through, he got better and better. Uh, so there's only a few sets in the world like Record this, jet. because a lot of times people just bought each one. But yeah, that's Bush Root. A couple of things, by the way. People look at, uh, and you know, show up on a wrong wiki or something, but they think Bushroot was patterned after uh, Poison Ivy and Liquidator was Hydra Man. And it's like Hydra Man happened when I was out of comics, like in my college years, I think. Okay. And I said, no, I can tell you exactly who the Liquidator was based on Sandman because. Yeah, and, yeah. Four, I want to say, Sandman like went down drains to escape as sand particles, yes. and and uh, Spider Man defeated him by mixing concrete in with him and getting him <laughs> wet. And I think yeah. we did the same thing. With Liquid uh, and Bushroot was patterned after plant two things, a little bit of Swamp Thing, uh, the idea of being you could chop him up and he could survive. And we did an episode called Twin Beaks. That he was the body wrapped in, he was the body wrapped in plastic, and it's because the idea that it was just a husk that he was a plant who could leave behind part of himself and regrow. Uh, but he was actually based on Plant Man in Strange Tales, who actually first fought the Human Torch in a big floppy hat, like dark wings and a cloak. But that's when 
trees. He could have cactus throw thorns and trees would swat at him. And, you know, the idea that plants would come to life along with, I'm sure, memories of, you know, the trees in Wizard of Oz. I was going to say, so I would like that. it if somebody picked apples off of you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then when he came back, he I think he only had two appearances. He was in a ridiculous leaf costume with big leaves <laughs> as his, uh, his uh, background. He's so here's the Hellboy fish. from our show. Yeah, yeah. Pivot. And he's got shorts. Yeah. I like well, the Hellboy shorts. does have shorts, yeah. This is very person to person. Yes, Tad, oh, what's in your study? This oh, wow. is my... Ape Sapien. Mm -hmm. That's what you call original Mike Mignola artwork. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. There's a glove up there, Don't too. Oh, There's one, only one that glove. A... The tradition of <laughs> that. That is the, yeah. <laughs> that is the... That is the oven mitt of doom. <laughs> I love it. That's Was it really an oven mitt? That's fantastic. I yeah, like exactly. That was done by a, a, a fan friend. And actually, <laughs> I got to say... Johnny left that glove in your my, house. Exactly. One yeah. glove. Johnny my wants to pan that. over and show his glove. It's either one glove or three. There's never an even pair. There's three gloves. <laughs> this, this is the one piece of artwork that uh, when I'm gone, I hope I will have donated to like the Comic Art Museum in Oakland. Or oh, nice. Francisco. But... Uh, you can see that this is out of it's all sorts of glare, obviously. No worries, man. Uh, uh, this is uh, from the island. Yeah, oh, yeah I see. Oh, sure. Yeah. But you can just see. Nice. It's great because it is a page that was a silent page. Yeah. So there didn't have to be word balloons. So this okay. got to the point where it was the balloons were added in Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, which isn't wow. as cool to see them pasted on. But this is. Yeah. You know, yeah. amazing. My wow. wife bought my wife bought it for me, and uh, she doesn't help me. So the I negative space is incredible. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's, how about that animation cell behind your chair, Ted? If that's what it is. The yeah. 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 yeah that that is actually a uh, actually now I have light. <laughs> that is a uh, just a, a cell made by my staff as a gift to me. Nice. That's uh, awesome. It's too far away. What is it of? I can't. I can't launch see it. Launchpad. It's, uh, launch pad and, it's yeah. dark green launch pad and uh, Goslin. Beautiful. Outstanding. I like it. I like it a lot. Of, I like it. It. I like exactly. I see. You got the Wednesday comics back there and everything. Yeah. 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 That great DC oh, collection. Yeah. yeah. I actually have them in the uh, in the newspaper. I, oh, over here, on. I have the news. Yeah. The, I have the newsprint edition. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, oh wow! They have it in a book. Yeah, there's oh, a little, always, there's a little tiny, I tiny Robin face. With, with, uh, <laughs> uh, I always uh, use that as a story about bad comic shops because I went to a comic shop here in town, and uh, I was getting Wednesday comics, and the guy helping said, "Why would you want to buy this?" And it was that the discussion going on at the time about its newsprint, it costs this much, mm -hmm. and the quality, of, you know, and all that. Sure. And it's kind of like. You know, a good business model usually doesn't have the clerk talking a customer out of buying something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of basic 101. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you never tell. And I did not go to that comic shop again. There so you go. I'd rather, I would dr drive down, you know, into the San Fernando Valley where they've got. Uh, uh, Golden Apple had, or no, it's Earth Comics. It's a Mark Wade store. Yeah, they don't uh, judge your purchase. It's a satellite yeah. shop. Oh, cool. Yeah, exactly. And, I'll take uh, this. I, Good choice. I got to say, I, I, uh, I was out of work for a year and a half there for a while before I ended up on Bob's Burgers. On uh, Bob's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. And uh, you get out of the comics habit. You know, you say, well, I can't afford this. I got to cut comics out. Sure. And, uh, you know, I've told people, I said, you want to stop collecting comics? Buy them one at a time. <laughs> because when you have a pull list, you say, well, here's 30 bucks or 40 bucks. You know, sure. you're, you're taking home a stack of comics. When you buy one comic at a time, and it's like four bucks, yep. it's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, how many of this? And then suddenly it's like real easy to drop things. Anyway, I got out of that. I got out of the habit, so now it's it's more like I hear about a graphic 
the other I, yeah. on. Honestly, guys, uh, like, with the latest with the latest group of creators, and certainly during the pandemic, as much as we do, and we all want to support shops, but man, I'll tell you, the price of a floppy is certainly under discussion, and you know that the publishers are thinking about it as well. Joe Pruitt from Aftershock was even telling me that it's like I kind of want to offer a product that is more than twenty pages. But is you know a fulfilling read, and certainly with DC with the black label mm -hmm. and those comics being eight bucks, but they're like sixty pages and stuff. It's yeah, I, I really think that the future of the floppy is really precarious right yeah. now. That's well, my comics own observation. Have, comics has always had that thing of perceived value, mm -hmm. and it used to be way before my day. But you get fifty-two pages for a dime. Yep. Like, yeah. That's. That makes sense. Here's the dime. I get this big chunky thing, and it's going to keep my kid quiet for X amount of time. Right. Um, still, when I again the beginning of the Silver Age, comics were still a dime. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then, right when I started collecting Marvel seriously, is right about when they quickly jumped to twelve cents, which is a weird price. Twelve cents the longest time, and then fifteen. Yep. Uh, and then around when they were twenty five is I think when I went to college and. I had a, a friend buying them for me back home, and then it was Funny. like, don't worry about it. And then I didn't get back into it, frankly, until uh, I went to TV Animation, where the guys had a weekly trip to the comic store habit. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, but it's always about, again, perceived value. And uh, a lot of, when I got back into comics, I traded in a bunch of comics I didn't care about, but I realized to them, these are old comics. So... I traded them in, and it just gave me a lot of trading value, so I could go in and experiment with all, in the big black and white, you know, era of uh, well, Ernie Turtles and Mister X, and what are some of the other ones? Yeah, Mr. Monster. It wasn't black and white, but that era, sure. Megaton Man, all that. I could yes. just experiment because I was getting stuff free. Uh, <laughs> but now I just feel like, and as much, and you know, this is an old conversation. As much as comic stores save the industry if they turned more into bookshops where it was like, mm -hmm. you know, a publisher gave a writer and artist an advance mm -hmm. and said, here's what it is, make a comic and then you publish it. And it's a big hefty story. Like, you know, obviously the, you have something like black sad. Sure. Yeah. This is yeah. just gorgeous artwork, fantastic oh, yeah. stories. Wonderful. And it's like, wow, what that's about? worth, you know, yeah, much. and it's going to stay there for a while, and uh, you know, buying some for kids that basically, well, you guys, I assume, oh yeah, comics when you collect those together, mm -hmm. those things are eternal. Yeah, they're evergreen. They stay on a shelf, and we have new kids coming all the time, like to buy yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's like uh, it stays there. It's fresh every time. It's like I always compared to like Dora the Explorer. Like, you always get a new four-year-old every year. There's another kid turns yeah, four to yeah, start watching yep. TV. That's why she's been on the airs for 40 years, whatever, 20 yeah, years. 40 years. But, yeah. but that's what it's like. Uh, I know I watched that show for eight years in a One row. She's I had all my this. kids. <laughs> <I'll be laughs> all yeah. She's all old, exactly. So, oh, yeah, comics never gets old. And we see. constantly get we get messages and letters from kids who their favorite hero is Action Cat. And it's been and I think it actually oh, debuted. Fantastic. Yes, I think it actually had debuted in 2012. So it's still a thing. It's been eight years already, and uh, actually it's still, still progressing, still carrying Getting its good. own life. So even though That's we haven't awesome. done a book in a few Probably years, something. yeah. Oh, he froze. Problem with turning your glasses on a messy floor like that is you really can't see them. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think Action Cat. I mean, again, to have a, a character note, you know, and a, and a brother pass it to his little brother and yeah. you know, being in the family and, yep. and to hear it is like Action Cat, you know, it's just, that's that's something special. Well, you know, I mean, that goes you, you think about it, we, oh, like we, yeah, we, we did Tiny Titans and before that we were doing Patrick the Wolf Boy. So right. we've been doing this yeah. since the 90s and every year we get four and five year olds coming up to us. And I'm like, well, you obviously weren't reading these things in the 90s. So yeah. it, it's got to be happening yeah. somehow. It's got to be happening yeah. from your parents. It's got to be happening from brothers and sisters. Yeah. And every year we have new fans. But yeah, even, the adult, yeah, but even, even the adult product is mm -hmm. moving to the graphic novel model. I literally yeah. today, not to name drop, but I just talked to Charlie Adler from uh, Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And his next project, he's doing something with uh, 
it's either Rob Williams or Robbie Morrison, another British uh, writer. Hello. And um, they are designing a graphic novel that I'm like, are you going to serialize it? He's like, nope. 120 pages. Yeah. We're working on it. We haven't even shopped it yet. But, you know, we'll find a home. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, again, and, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Walking Dead, you know, one of the last great floppies that, you know, would sell constantly and everything. But it's interesting that everyone is kind of thinking that way. It seems yeah. to be the way to go to get a book done in one where they could buy one graphic novel or 120 pages. And if they choose to find it on the next one, they could. But it's easier to complete a story and don't leave them hanging, you know. And yeah. and, and you uh, could, and even if they jump in on on book four or whatever, they still get it. It's still not. It could be their first comic, and we we go into that when we create comics. That this book we're working on could be a little kid's first comic. So I don't want to intimidate them by by now to have to collect the first twenty to understand what this is. Yeah, yeah. So so that's what a, and, it's real different to create comics these days. That's what's always a, a thought in my mind. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely, and it's like, you know, Stephen King does a good job of, you know, making some money, putting out a book every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, and, and you can kind of do with serialized versus done in one, uh, even if it's a novel. Uh, I just, you know, I thought Old Guard was fantastic. I saw a little bit of your interview with uh, Greg. And yeah, uh, yeah, I just, that was a great movie. I really enjoyed it. And then at the end, there's this little thing that happens where you go, oh, I want to hear that story. Yeah, so I want you know? And it's not yeah. like it has to be, doesn't have to be a soap opera uh, like current comics are. Uh, it's like you can really tell this meaty thing and say, I want to I want to hear the next part, you know, or just, even if it's just like we did at the end of our Hellboy movie. Well, you know, Greg, Greg told us it's a uh, phantom claw, you know, yeah, <laughs> Greg told us it's uh, it was built as a potential three movie deal. Yeah. So uh, if people who are watching haven't watched Old Guard yet, it's a great, as Ted said, great espionage action film. Charlie's there and the entire cast is just outstanding. Oh, yeah. And it does. It has this great little tag like a Marvel movie. Because the and it's because it really isn't. It's been described as a superhero movie, and it's like no, it's a comic book movie because it's based on you know Greg and Leandro's uh, image book, but it's it really is very grounded in reality with a hint of you know immortality. It's kind of Highlander if they all turned into mercenaries in the modern era. I was so. going to watch it you this know, weekend, but uh, Tad gave away the ending, so I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I just said, oh, and then this <laughs> you, know, uh, you know that the... I It was weird because he talked about it being sold as a, as a comic book movie, but other than saying based on the graphic novel, if you watch the trailer, if anything... And I think when I saw the first one, I thought, oh, is this about, is this a vampire thing or something? Um, because in the trailer, you see people get shot and then they stand up. It's like, okay, last guy I saw that was Ooh, the zombies. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's great. By the way, yeah, real yeah, quick, yeah. And, and sooner or later, I should go out and eat Yeah, something. whenever, whenever <laughs> okay, you can stay I keep, longer. Seeing, I keep seeing trailers for all these movies. And I'm yeah. watching Morbius and obviously right, Black yeah. Widow. Uh, uh, Winter Soldier and, and the Falcon, I guess, have yes. been put off again. And yep. I, I'm sure part of it is they have to finish filming, but the other part is probably like, because they say, oh, it's really set in the events of the Marvel Universe. Well, it kind of backs everybody up. It's like, when are we going to get to see this stuff? You know? yep. and, and who's got, I was so happy that something as quality as Old Card showed up on, on Netflix. That's like, great, I get to see this. Yeah, that's you know? cool. It so, seems like yeah, it seems like this. Say it again, Ted. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, obviously, sitting in a movie theater is a whole different experience as yeah. far as presentation. But, um, it, but it seems like the streamers to feature film. I can see it, but mm -hmm. it seems like the streamers are are best equipped, at least in the immediate moment, because they do keep this stuff in inventory and slowly dole it out. Because I know they finished the old guard back in January, completely. And they were just waiting. Or another buddy who will eventually be on Word Balloon, Joe Henderson, the showrunner for Lucifer. Uh, season five and six, as I understand it, they're breaking it up in half. And there's going to be eight episodes. And then they're going to take a break and yeah, then nice. show the other eight episodes. And that's done. And they finally just did announce uh, the, the premiere being in August and stuff. 
So yeah, it's it's uh, honestly, I mean, nobody wants this to happen. As a broadcaster myself yeah. and a broadcast nerd that follows the business, nerd. I find this fascinating. Oh, I'm nerd anyway. You're right. And, 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 yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. The animation the Netflix has had such a, an effect on animation in that yeah. um, they are with their money they bankrolled a lot of. I mean, going Keen has a movie with them. I think. Um, who did put out a trailer and it's like, wow, they got Glenn's heart on the screen. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, but they've done, people ask me, oh, they think they're giving me a compliment and they say, oh, we, I grew up with your shows. They're so much better than the crap that's on now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Realize I've heard that exact comment every generation, five, seven years. Sure, bud. And, and the thing that people are calling crap is the thing the next guy says it was great back then not the crap that's all yeah. you know? do you ever get uh, like when you visit family do you ever get that old family guy that you never heard from a while they always say hey you still drawing <laughs> <laughs> do you ever get that they get that all the time <laughs> you still drawing? i'm old enough now there's not that much don't they know there, but they have yeah. to do it with their hand you still drawing yeah. and i'll and i'll say yeah a little bit <laughs> yeah. or, or do you get that is there any real money in cartoons yeah. or comics? yeah, yeah. You know, uh, what you... else do you do to make money <laughs> yeah. see did you draw <laughs> freehand? They always say that freehand. Did you draw freehand? You draw that freehand? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, oh, that was it. There was that time where people say, "Well, computers do all that now." Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, by having my having my first job at Disney, it's kind of like a company buying in some a studio and seeing The Simpsons on the wall. Yeah. You, you pass over a lot of that stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people say, "Oh, Disney! I've heard of that." You know, the Walt guy. Is he still I, alive? I taught uh, kids. I taught kids broadcasting in the yeah. first uh, so, or the last semester that just wrapped up in May. And one of my kids wanted to do a short uh, piece, audio piece, and he said, "I want to compare modern animation to old school animation." And of course, as we all would think, I'm like, "Oh, like Bugs Bunny, the Flintstones, whatever." Yeah. And he's like, "You know, stuff like Dexter's Laboratory and Ed, Ed, and Eddie." <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> and, and again, it's a 20 year old kid, yeah. so the stuff yeah. he was watching in the early 2000s that's old school to him. So yeah, yeah. I get it. Uh -huh. It's amazing. When I see stuff on out. There's like uh, that's funny. two shows I talk about. One I just love. I've actually watched three times. Where there's plenty I haven't watched, but uh, it is based on graphic novels. Uh, Hilda. Uh, a show on Netflix. It is uh -huh. such a charming show that showcases the animation. Starts out in the certainly in the credits, and the they don't explain anything. It's just like, what is this world? And you just flow with it. But this little character is so charming, and she has a story that flows throughout the season. It is just fantastic. And then uh, Red Seacrest, um, Kipo, and the world of the other beasts. Mm. Something like that. If you look K-I-P-O. Uh, okay. Look on that on Netflix. And again, a science fiction, you know, near future, not near future, hopefully, uh, where animals seem to be in control of the surface world and they've all mutated in strange ways and the humans are underground in burrows and or wow. slaves to these things. And it is an ongoing story where characters really change from you know, hero to villain or villain to maybe a hero, back to, you know, it, it's just, it's the kind of thing that you can't pitch in a one line. Uh, and it is the type of thing that Netflix can do because they'll believe in a person or they'll, they'll put it in their logarithm and it's like, oh, you've got these credits and the concepts in the show are this, this, and this. And yeah, that's worth this amount of money. Can you make it for that amount of money? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. So, wow. Uh, yeah, I just waiting to, and they've done a lot of it that they haven't released yet. But they basically went to went to studios and said, "So, what's your dream project that you can never sell at your own studio?" Right. Mm -hmm. You got to let the creator go, let him explore, yeah. let him go. And I love that. Mm -hmm. and, and people ask again about my own work. Uh, I love the new Ducktales. I mean, I got to see the crew. I just introduced myself and went in and visit. And uh, they recreated Darkwing, whereas my Darkwing, again, Silver Age, famous for not having continuity. Uh, their show is very much, as I say to people, I said, no, I did the show for the last century. <laughs> They're doing it <laughs> yeah. for this century. The new millennia. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so there's, 
their show is heavy continuity and finally is in order on Disney Plus. Uh, but how they reintroduced Darkwing, it's like, and I knew their plans that had come in, and sure enough, fans reacted in just the way I thought they would. I mean, they first, you see this Darkwing as this old show that, that Launchpad used to grew up watching. You realize it shaped his life. Um, <laughs> and, but a Darkwing secret identity was Drake Mallard, and this character isn't named that. So people still think that's the old Darkwing. They're making fun of the old Darkwing. They're telling stories about the old Darkwing. Or, he, or in that universe, he's just a TV show. And it's like, pay attention to the name. The name's not there. And then sure enough, they tell the story of they're going to do a new Darkwing movie. So basically, in the DuckTales wow. universe, Darkwing Duck is like Batman 66, mm -hmm. an inspired launch pad. And they're going to do a new Batman movie. And it's Ed Edward White did the voice, but it's based on Christopher Nolan, but it's it's this very dark, you know, tale of, That's of cool. the I'm evil dark. Darkwing they want to come back. Um, and then, I won't spoil it for just anybody who looks up the episode. Uh, I was going to watch it this weekend. You see the new... See the, uh, you see the new Darkwing, the old Darkwing, they recreate some villains. It's just fantastic. And, and I know what's left I think Disney always does this thing where they play up X amount and then they want a big hiatus and then they want to blow through like seven episodes, one a day, you know, and just so who knows when the next one will, will come out. But uh, Darkwing will come back. They'll introduce Goslin, the new version of Goslin, to the show. Uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. They did just, you know, they're doing it in a modern way where they have a writer's room and they plot out the, the sure the season and <laughs> arcs and what they want to do if we get to do a second season we'll pay this off here and all that there's things that they did and they cast with like you only have two lines in that episode which seems beneath this guy that you're paying to do they say but wait till season three yeah he shows and up it's like oh now you're a huge thing <laughs> it's gonna say um, every episode so <laughs> the uh anyway it, it's just they did such an incredible job with it. The first time I visited, the writer said, how big was your writer's room? I went, writer's room? <laughs> I came into my writer. little office and pitched <laughs> ideas. I took them apart. We talked about it. And if we came up with something we liked, they went home and wrote it up. And I pitched it. That was the amount of time yeah, yeah. we had. So. That's so awesome, man. no writer's room. So. Pat mm -hmm. Schumacher, so. the, the co-showrunner of Harley Quinn, you know, told me about his writer's room and everything. And yeah, man, I mean, God, we've... We've literally done hours of minutia of each episode of uh, of Harley Quinn and stuff in my conversations with him That's this cool. year. Yeah, very interesting. I know it's a different world, man. And also, so many of these ideas during the pandemic, they they are transferring to animation. And thank God for things like DC Animation that finally is allowing the North American audience to realize: no, you can tell a good serious story along mm -hmm. with the fun, along with the comedy and yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. You know, mm -hmm. anyway. I still would have never imagined that Harley Quinn would have that Warner Brothers animation would have let a show like Harley Quinn exist. It's okay. it's brilliant. I finally finished it. I loved it. But even as little as three years ago, I would have never imagined it. Like, totally agree. Yep. yep, amazing. Yeah, because it, it, it again, they're everybody's trying different stuff. But yeah, in previous years, they'd say that harms our IP. We can't sell toys if she has a potty mouth. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Well, you, you know, I announced oh, people dying. <laughs> and she has lots of relations. Oh, does she? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm not allowed to watch that then. It's too adult. <laughs> yeah, it's too adult for you already. I can't do it. Yeah. No, I understand. Ted, I feel bad. Go, go If you want, go yeah. ahead and have dinner if you'd like. I mean, it's Thank I mean, you. again. All right. we, Otherwise, we, I can't yeah. go on for hours, but I probably We could should. eat right on well, here. This, yeah. this is an excuse to have you back. <laughs> Uh, to talk okay. about Bob's because, or and Part and two. also so many of the other, I mean, Buzz and 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 all the TV shows that you've done beyond Darkwing and stuff. But seriously, dude, Darkwing Beyond, we, we were hanging on every word, and this <laughs> yeah. was fantastic. Yeah, yeah you're I'm awesome. so glad you did this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Just to be and clear, I, I, on, yes, on Bob's Burgers, and I don't draw those characters. I did one at a convention. Oh, <laughs> one step it out. But I know we met. Burgers, a I was a, a storyboard guy, and uh, and so I don't draw those characters in conventions because again, they're not mine. And I'm, I'm not happy drawing them. That's cool because um, I remember we met but, at uh, hanging outside, waiting for a table at a restaurant in Denver, and you were out yeah. there too. 
yeah. and me and Franco put our name in, and we came back out, and we I didn't know who you were, and Franco told me, that's the guy, he created Darkwing Duck, his name's Ted. It's like, oh, cool, let's go talk, and then I remember, I think, like, we each had a two-guy table, and it was easier to get for. I can't remember if we ate together. I don't remember what happened, but we I remember sitting, sitting to out. each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember sitting out, standing outside, talking, and that was real cool, and I remember that. Like, it just happened. It's really, that was really I remember cool. before that, I hit your table at a at San Diego. <laughs> Did you? You had somebody else helping you, so neither one of you were there. Oh. You gave me, like, uh, a free copy of uh, the Wolf Wolf Boy. Yeah. Wolf Boy. Patrick, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Jimmy hilarious. the Muscle, probably. Yeah, Patrick. That's probably. I knew it wasn't just Wolf Kid. Yeah, yeah Patrick uh, the Wolf Boy, yeah. Yeah, but that was. Well, that's cool. I, mean, I just love that. I stuff. was telling my family because we were eating dinner at six o'clock, and I said, I want to get on there this time. I really want to be on the show. I'm there. glad. But I told him the story like, I want to finish before for seven. I want to get up, up on there. Yeah. Well, and, and Tad, seriously, you were one of the first um, pros to come to me so early in Word Balloon and be like, hey, I'm listening. And it was absolutely, it floored me. And, I, and it was so great because you are like, hey, I'm doing these animated han han um, Hellboy movies and I want to talk. I'm like, it would be a pleasure. And I know the yeah. iFanboy guys felt the same way. So truly... It, it really means a lot when it does. the pros there's know what I'm doing of, and like it. And I'm sorry. And there's a couple of times I've given you contributions in person, but the yes, iFanboy guys, <laughs> I've been with them early, early on. And there's a couple of times I sent them a box of comics of just old stuff. They got some of those old cowboy comics at Disney. Oh, comics. that's great. Josh uh, Flanagan has, uh, uh, and I specifically, I had a complete set of Iron Man. And I broke it to give him the first Hawkeye appearance. Wow! That's the one comic that he has framed up on his wall. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. So uh, no, those have been great guys. But I was just about to say, it's like I used to listen to you religiously. But what changes is I don't drive anywhere anymore. Mm -hmm. When you drive to work, I have you know you have this amount of time. So you sure. To to the podcast. And then I retired, and the world changed, and suddenly I'm listening to all sorts of political podcasts and ranting Ooh. about that. And <laughs> like I've never read them. I subscribe to Washington Post, and it's like I never read, used to read the newspaper. And it's like I'm not even hit the comics page. What's wrong with me? I hear uh, you, man. Yeah. No, a lot of people are saying that. One of the reasons why I went to video, I saw my numbers not not drop terribly, but no, obviously a lot of people aren't commuting, so they aren't watching or they aren't listening. Yeah. And I'm listening to less podcasts. Because I'm not commuting to work either, so I get it. Yeah. So, and that's one of the reasons well, why I took video. Imagine you're Jeffrey Katzenberg, and you've just created this thing called Quibi, designed for people to watch a little I am, ten minute thing. I, I got to be honest, uh, really, Tad. The whole Quibi story. It's like, hey, congratulations! You've you invented 2009 YouTube. Well done. <laughs> it's like, who thought this was a good idea? I would have told Jeffrey and Meg. Bad idea, long form guys. I think, I think the I think the idea that with them was just uh, you get big enough stars. I actually because I can see a lot of things for your consideration because I'm. Oh help. sure, yeah. Um, and I was intrigued by um, like which show? Uh, oh, I'll be right out for that. They've actually been telling me about it. Mm. See? Exactly. Uh, we don't want you to get in trouble with the family. Pizza's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Home cooked. Uh, anyway, that... that uh, yeah, I forgot where I was. Uh, what Quibi show, yeah. Oh, well, just that uh, Anne Kendrick. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. I watched enough of that. I said, well, I'm really curious about that one. So I, I watched that one, and it was like, it peaks and valleys. And it's like, yeah, that's pretty good but didn't go where i wanted it was like okay but it's like if you're gonna do a little thing like that that has to be your impression for every single trailer you have to say yep. oh it's like saying if you want to watch the mandalorian gotta watch it on disney plus yeah you yeah know, it's that, you know whatever it is um or if you want to see these marvel series and continue that and it's got big special effects you're spending real money it's like this one place unless you can offer something like that to me it's not about the length it's about you know it's the story i mean i get i got the idea but you know it's also like and jeffrey's out here in southern california it's like not everybody takes the subway often they're like driving and they shouldn't be watching mm -hmm. their 10 minute show over there yep uh, yeah. 
No, it's like I said, I, I didn't understand it when I heard it. I'm like, how is this new? And again, I, I, I'm not as bad as my buddy Rob Burnett, who literally gleefully reads every article about how it's tanking as bad as <laughs> hey, he loves it. <laughs> well, again, Jeffrey Katzenberg, say what you will, but he created that Disney golden age of animation. Uh, I'm with you, man. Putting people together and all of that. And there would be no Darkwing Duck unless Jeffrey said, I'm ordering you to create this series. You know? That's cool. And I have no idea of like, it wasn't like I had an idea for even a superhero series or a superhero parody, something like that. I might have had science fiction ideas, but uh, that just you know, would have been a whole different thing. So thank you, Jeffrey. Indeed. Absolutely. That, thank you. Shout out to Jeffrey. I will go out and get something to eat. Yeah. All right, buddy. Mm -hmm. Dude, thank you very you much. Guys, talk. You're good, man. You're sharing water with you. you can take your swig of your jug. Yeah, <laughs> there he goes. Exactly. Right there. Yeah. There he goes. That's <laughs> outstanding. It's important. I mean, hey. you know, wash your hands, wear a mask, and hydrate. Mm -hmm. Right. Cape. Cape too. I got my mask. Uh, Great seeing hey, you. There you go. Oh, there you go. Mask. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Appreciate Thanks it. Great, yeah. Yeah. Great right. hangout. Thank good you. Good talking so much. to you guys. You're a good man. All right. Okay. Be well, Stay yeah. dangerous. <laughs> there we go. Ted, Ted, Ted Stokes, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how, how about that? Huh? He's mm, wonderful. He's a good I'm man. Telling you. Jesus. That was amazing. Ted, that was, that was awesome. so great. Uh, seriously, I can't thank you enough. I, I, I'm letting him know that uh, I took him out of the picture. He's, I don't know if he's hanging out or what. I mean, we might still be going. He's giving me the thumbs up off screen. But, yeah, <laughs> so happy. Uh, be well. There he goes. All right. Man, I swear. And now, now I'm really going to gush. Seriously, guys. I, I, think, lo I, love I know it's so not our really. usual hangout and everybody no. talking. I was, just, I was just going to say, word balloon is over. Now we can start the oh yeah podcast. Yeah, if you want exactly <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the oh yeah podcast. <laughs> so, oh, that was awesome. So many good stories, man. Yeah, I can just yeah. listen to him tell stories all day. Well, literally. it's a fascinating career, absolutely, yeah. man. And mm -hmm. it, seriously, that's that's truly been in in the comic book world as well. This has been the greatest thing about word balloon. Honestly, <laughs> is getting to meet these people and hearing these incredible stories. So no, I get it. I mean, it's it's just like like you said, he was one of the first guys that came up to you. Like when when we're at a table in San Diego or standing outside of a restaurant in in yeah. Denver, and and this guy comes up to you and starts talking about you, and and he he goes, oh, I love your books, and I have this, and I have this, and I'm like, oh, my name's Franco, and it's Tad Stone. Oh, why do I know your name? Yeah, yeah. I, I know your name for a reason. Oh my God, the realization is coming to me. I know exactly who you yeah. are. Why yeah. are you talking to me? Type yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. So do the, for people watching, um, I don't know if you saw the beginning of the show. I, I figured we would play. Yeah, uh, let's start amazing, the show again. Our amazing gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. want to play it more than. There's a clue back there, Johnny, for what? the beginning. Oh, let me hear. I'll, I'll isolate you. That's Toledo uh, Mudhen's hat back there. That's a clue. <laughs> yeah, incidentally. That's a clue right there. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. All you right, like here we that. go. Tony Pacos. Yeah. I have a picture <laughs> of uh, the Mudhen's if you don't know. <laughs> I'm going to put up the I love that. Watch it. Here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna show, we're going to show it and then, uh, we'll, then we'll talk. Here we go. Our biggest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Podcast host. This is Jamie Farr from the TV series MASH. And uh, Yoko Chips uh, wanted me to say hi to all the guys. And I got their names here. Art, Franco, Scoot, and of course Yoko Chips, Mike, and the other Mike. And they uh, they had a question. They said, uh, who was Klinger's favorite comic book and superhero? Well, I believe you have me uh, confused with uh, Radar. As a matter of fact, I, I just emailed uh, Gary Burba. Okay, clearly I have to ask whoever is causing the echo <laughs> to stop being an idiot, please. Oh, Let's try it again. And if it doesn't work, it's our... Hi, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Podcast host. This is Jamie Farr from the TV series MASH. And uh, Yoko Chips uh, wanted me to say hi to all the guys. And I got their names here. Art, Franco, Scoot, and of course Yoko Chips, Mike and the other mic, and they uh, they had a question. They said, uh, who was Klinger's favorite comic book and superhero? Well, I believe you have me uh, confused with uh, Radar. 
As a matter of fact, I, uh, I just emailed uh, Gary Berghoff, who played Radar, and he told me that uh, his favorite comic book, actually, was Wiz Comics, and his favorite character was Captain Marvel. Uh, but you got the right guy, Jamie Farr, because I love comic books. I had a whole bunch of, I had the, the first Superman and the first detective comics that introduced Batman. As a matter of fact, uh, at one of the conventions, I met Bob Kane and he did a rendering of uh, Batman for me. And uh, I, I can't find it, otherwise I'd show it to you. But look at, uh, here's some of the collections I have. My wife got me this one here. And of course, it uh, has all the great uh, characters in there. Uh, the Spectre and Hawk Man and Plastic Man. And, and of course, uh, here's uh, the great comics. I used to uh, enjoy those. Uh, I get uh, the uh, uh, New York uh, uh, Mirror and the uh, Chicago Tribune. They get all the, uh, the comic characters. And I wanted to tell you, I had all the originals. They were absolutely pristine. And uh, when I got drafted into the army, I had them all put in my uh, mom's uh, garage in a nice big barrel. And guess what? When I got out, she uh, she had given them all the way. I could have been, I could have retired. <laughs> I, I didn't have to do mash. I had all these wonderful, absolutely beautiful comic books that uh, that I had, and, and I loved them so much. And uh, Scoot, I guess you're from Toledo, and you like Tony Paco's, so I have a picture of that. So listen, guys, I like podcasts. I'll uh, I'll check in with you. Uh, uh, Jeff Maxwell, who played Igor, uh, has uh, MASH Matters, which is a podcast on uh, about, uh, you know, MASH. And, of course, Alan Alda has one called Clear and Vivid. So nice talking to all of you, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, listening to your uh, your podcast. Thank you. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. you. Yeah. Tony Packers, MASH. I love the best part of that video. Is how disappointed he's going to be when he sees our, our podcast. <laughs> he says that I saw the Tad Stone show. <laughs> no, he, he was good. Tad Stone one, he's going to be impressed. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Every time he says Yoko chips, that kills me. <laughs> oh, for me, with me. I can't believe it. Because <laughs> Yoko chips, yeah. I mean, Jamie Farr has been a subject of the podcast for a long time. He's come <laughs> up for years because, of course, the connection with Scoot. And uh, to be a listener, a fan of the podcast, and and see this come about is is pretty. It's historic for the audio yeah. podcast. I'm gonna have to I take like a it. screen cap, and um, because you know it's awesome. So, cameo if you if you yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, would like a Jamie Farr greeting, it's only a hundred dollars. It's the greatest hundred dollars we've ever spent. Yeah, and, um, I'm gonna spend it on every podcast now to get and a then video for, from him. For two ninety nine more, you can leave a comment. And as I said earlier, I, I thanked him profusely, but maybe I should take a screen cap, especially with Scoot wearing the uh, the Mudheads. Uh, <laughs> they're like, see? Ah, they, they are Mudhead fans. That's yeah, good. That's, I like that. Yeah, yeah. and that, him holding a figure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jamie Farr. That's cool. Fuck, that was so good. That was, seriously, it exceeded expectations. And I've shared it with a couple friends that uh, you wouldn't be watching the podcast and stuff. And they have a combing cameo for all the various guys. But I honestly, and I, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. It's like, I can't think of another celebrity that has been so gentle and sweet with the people they talk to. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, Skoke, you know, we, we know his, I, I see here you just retired from the tire shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just, and it's, so, it's so adorable how, how like, sweet he is to everybody. And well, honestly... Like, when I first saw it, like the, the first run through, he's like, "Oh, you got the wrong guy." I, you know, you're thinking of, uh, you know, radar. radar. And I'm like, "Oh, damn, he's not going to answer this question. He's going to fluff it off." But then he came back, and he's, "I'm like, all right, yeah, he's, he's he's hard. Hard. yeah, yeah." He's like a genuine comic fan, which is perfect for the show. Spectre, yeah, Bob Kane, yeah, yeah. better than we could have ever thought of. I mean, I don't know who else would have. He brought out old books. That's cool. Which, <laughs> he had props, yeah. And the books were a little uh, gamey from Jamie. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, this, literally, um, both books were published in the 70s, maybe the 60s wow, with yeah. the Pfeiffer right. book. And I know as a kid, those and like giant uh, table or coffee table sized Peanuts collections, that pretty much was it for graphic novels when yeah. I was a little kid. Yeah, right. They were so, in the libraries too and stuff, yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, I remember that's the thing for like his. And my wife picked up this Joe's Pfeiffer uh, color. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then that's young picture. Never used to do like those fireside books, but those were like reprints. Right, yeah. and you're right. Those yeah. did come later. Those did come later. But, but they were uh, in the 70s. They were in the late 70s. Oh no, I remember. No, I they were Christmas presents for me one year. But I know that those two were in stores prior to those uh, fireside books and and uh, the DC ones as well, the Bonanza or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was that did like you know Superman from the 30s to the 70s, and yep. you know, was, so, yeah. You think we could get Tony Danza next? Hey, oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> can you call all of my characters Tony? So I am <laughs> who it is? I want to know the yoke. Uh, you can uh, list the names to shout out, but I'm just gonna say hello, Tony and yeah. Tony <laughs> and Tony and Tony. Yeah. And Yoko, Yoko chips. chips. When he was, yeah. and Yoko Tony. When he was in New York, correct? That's how Bill Maher would introduce him. He'd be like, he played Tony on Taxi, Tony on Who's the Boss, and he's in a new show called Hudson Street where he plays a character called Tony. Here's Tony. Tony. <laughs> is, there, is there anything else sweeter about that video than in the age of COVID, he carries a picture of Paco's? I know. Yeah, yeah he yeah. had it. He's a, he's a postcard from that. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I gotta, go take, I gotta go stand in front of that same building and take a picture so we can show it on the next All Yeah podcast. <laughs> and like Johnny was saying, the, the superheroes he name checked were like, yeah. it's not Hawk like he Man. was like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Like he went, he went Hawk deeper there. Yeah. I the Spectre. Spectre. He's a, somebody who's not a comic fan. So Spectre's a good one. Man. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's good. Yeah. Classic man for crying out loud. Yes, yeah. Oh, we should draw him some of these characters and send them to him as a thank you. <laughs> we could. Well, no, each I, one. I'll send him a hundred dollars each one. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's a good idea. Hundred dollars. Yeah, good idea. And have and have them all surrounding Klinger. Yeah. <laughs> or we'll draw all the superheroes wearing a wearing a dress. Oh my and God! Honor him. You send me. I get. I'm surrounded by Hawkman. I'm gonna draw the Spectre <laughs> eating Tony Paco's hot dog. Yes, yes, have them all. I love it when the oh yeah guys send me these pictures because I charge them a hundred dollars every time they send me one. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I, I, mean, I, I, I gotta find out. I, I I don't know how to do it, but yeah, we should like, hey, can we send Jamie something? You know, find an address that we could do that. That'd be great. That would yeah. be yellow. And he said, I've been receiving these drawings for the Every day for the last six months. I don't know what's going on. They're all coming from, from Ohio. Cameo, cameo, cameo. Yeah. Jamie, just Jamie Fall. That's it. I'm doing uh, something similar tomorrow with uh, John Cleese, and it's from a website called Fameo. Oh, and, cool. uh, and, uh, I wonder and they where were, they got the idea. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if, <laughs> hey, truly, I don't know if they're affiliated or not, but. They're not. Was, they're not. Nope. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say. Obviously, Mike, you got the knowledge. Okay. I, so, yeah, we, are, we they working, are they working with conventions or anything, Mike? Either company? Uh, not us. Okay. <laughs> there, no. There was conversations, but uh, we're we're not doing it. Okay. I don't. I don't. I think. Uh, I think they got, their ideas are is they still want what they get, and they don't want you know you could upcharge it and like. Then why not go directly to them type of thing? So I understand. No, I understand. Well, the the Cleese package, uh, and I'll even tell you, it was two hundred bucks, yeah. and um, for it, you got access to a John Cleese comedy special. And literally, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the move like him. He's like leaning back on his couch, literally almost at a forty five degree angle, almost like on a Frankenstein slab. I mean that's yeah, <laughs> Francis. Oh. <laughs> like that. oh, is that what he's like? Yeah, no, I mean his, his face, his face. What's your name? Yoko chips. Oh, Yoko and, chips. And he's telling he's telling <laughs> Python stories and other stories from his career. And Why I does heard, everybody look like the ceiling? Exactly, <laughs> and it's and it was um, it was Every like once in a while he lays out a fart. <laughs> oh, no, no, but I mean, it was, was forty five minutes long. And then they set up these meet and greets, and they have windows of like two hours. And mine is tomorrow from one my time local time until three. And you get in line, and you get like two to three minutes with him. Oh, I was about to say two hour meet and greet. It's two to three minutes. Right. Right. So, so that's why. I mean, if you just wanted, there were there were tiers, but if you wanted to be included in the meet and greet, it was two hundred bucks. And I'm like, this might be the only chance I get. 
even in a video capacity mm -hmm. to meet John Cleese. I'm like, that's worth 200 bucks. I, I can't wait. That. I can't wait to the next show when we show that video. We and will. He's gonna hold up a coconut, you know, <laughs> and and here's a coconut from our original production. <laughs> I can't wait. A copy of the video? Did I send you a copy? Yes. Yeah, they do. And and you and both of you. I mean, right. you know, that's what I believe we're both in the in the picture. So I better comb my hair and not uh, be like, "Hi, Mr. Cleese. <laughs> you have good hair, Johnny. I, yeah. I can't good hair. I can't wait till you ask him whether or not he's head of her junk. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? The junk is alive. I want to ask him about is the the Python comedy albums <laughs> because I'm fascinated by those, and also about his audio performance performing rather than his TV and film stuff because I figured that's kind of a fresh topic that I've never really heard him go in detail about. And um, I, uh, oh, I was going to say, you know, Franco and Scoot and I were talking, uh, you know, Skoke, you got to, I mean, can you imagine if uh, Cosby were doing a cameo? I wonder oh, what that might be like. Hey, oh. hello, Yoko Chips. This is the rest of cars. I'm pleased to be talking to you. Hey, let's talk about Tony Pachos. I like Jamie Farr. Hey, we were good friends. He came on a couple of my programs. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the big this fella. To the big fella good. here. There you, there, you go. there you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait this a minute. This is a very good distraction from prison. Let's, yeah, push, yeah. <laughs> Let's do a full screen. There it is. Wow. Wow. There it is. Couple Hello. of cool Hello. dudes. Damn. <laughs> Look at those right on the street. He was Man. on his 45th and Lex. That's when John Cleese met Superman. <laughs> he was very annoyed. Was he really? <laughs> he looks very, very happy in that picture, but he was not happy to take that Aww. picture. Well, take that picture. picture. Yes. On every show, I want to just name check random celebrities so Mike could pull out a photo. Yeah, pull out a photo, absolutely. <laughs> well, if he gave him 200 bucks, he probably would have felt a little bit better about it. Ray Romano! Hold on, stand by. Who is that? Hold on. Oh, oh he's no good? Bring it back. Oh, no. Bring it back. Oh, no. Oh, no. Gene Simmons! Bill Cosby! Yeah, where's, where's your... Bernard Shirley! Oh my oh, God. Do you have a picture of Tony Pacos in there? Oh, you and McGregor! <laughs> You know, they really hate each other. My sister Penny couldn't Hello, stand Cindy Williams. <laughs> Very unhappy set, unlike Happy Days, which we need truly to... were happy. happy we need to get Alan Arkin on cameo. Really? You want to talk? All right, fine. All right. Oh I'm yeah. Somebody here. I have no idea who you are. I don't really care. Does uh, Matthew who... McConaughey do a our cameo? We got oh. Alan. Who does? Man, that with no shirt. <laughs> Hey, talk who, about who, it. Who say? Oh, yeah. yeah all, right. all right. I would love Alan Arkin because he would go, and who the hell is Yoko Chips? This <laughs> makes no sense to me. I, I don't feel proper to, to read names Yoko Chips. I'm feeling like that might be racist. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say that. That's how about, not how about Sam Elliott? So they call you the Ghost Rider. How That's all I know. How you doing? We got to start in every episode. So they call you. So they call you Yoko oh, Chips. We forgot ghost stories. Oh, oh, next time. Oh, we're going to go on the next show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too long. yeah, yeah. but next time, uh, Mike, when you do, Skoke, when you do, uh, when you do Cosby doing a cameo, you got to get, like, you know, maybe a grill or something like that. Ah, I'm in jail, you see. Somebody <laughs> get me out of here, please. Is anybody <laughs> listening to this? Can you, hello? There's a lot of, there's a lot of pudding. Exactly, a pudding behind this hey, <laughs> Come here. Yeah, there it is. He got bars. <laughs> I understand there's something called conjugal visits, you see. <laughs> How do I get to see that? some food and pops in my Con anus? Conjugal. <laughs> I love I love how we had Tad Stones on and we had like a peak uh, uh, viewership of like twelve people and now we're probably down to one. Yeah, it's like it's like three. It's Mario. We have two hundred forty three thousand five fifty eight fifty nine sixty. It goes up. Oh, that's the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> two sheds is still watching. So is Wayne. Yeah, two sheds. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to get uh, Doctor Zayas to you know? Yeah, you know my yes. Elliot, Elliot, yeah. Can we get him? Dana Gould. I was going to say Elliot Gould. 
You know, I tried to log into the uh, Dr. Zayas Twitter account, but I can't remember. I can't remember. Get in it. I, 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 we had that. I, I tried to do it, and, and and I read the last few things Dr. Zayas wrote. He's just yelling at everybody. But this would be the first time, like, he's calling them filthy human scum, everyday scum. He just says scum. But it would be this would be a good time for Dr. Zayas because of the trying times, because the end of human too. civilization. And he's a doctor, too. We got to so bring him back. I don't know how to. I don't know how to log in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's true. All right. I'd like to see him do cameo. Yes. Hello. Congratulations on your 50th anniversary, humans. <laughs> I understand that you worked at a chemical plant for many years. <laughs> Perhaps some evidence of that plant will be in the forbidden zone. You know, some crap like that. It's good to see a lot of you dying. <laughs> <laughs> good riddance. Yes, right. it was all prophesized in the sacred mm -hmm. scroll. <laughs> One of the best parts about that Jamie Farr thing, again, going back to that, was yeah. my and Mike and the other Mike. Which is the other Mike? Is it I, I'm the other Mike or you the other Mike? I don't know. <laughs> this is going to be a only Jamie Farr. And, and, and Mike, spoken mighty Mike. This is the best, greatest mystery since who sent you that Jazzy Jeff air freshener, right? Listen, That's right. You guys, you guys. <laughs> we're privy. You guys were not privy to the writing session that Scoot and Johnny and I had oh, for yeah. that video, and oh. and we 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 agonized over every word of of what we should write to literally, him. yeah, they, <laughs> the oh, exact really? word, the letter. It was like a tweet. It was only two hundred and fifty characters, so we really had to make them count. So it's like, all right, well, we can get more space if we if we condense this. And Little we did we know he talked for two and a half minutes. It was so great. That was oh, good. Yeah. If, you fit, if you could fit Mike and other Mike, then you could have fit it. it well, no, <laughs> no, no, we couldn't because because when we when we listed everybody. We, we listed Scoot, and then we went back and we said, you know what? He's probably going to screw that up and say Scott. So in parentheses, we wrote, not Scott. We wrote yeah. Scoot, yeah. parentheses, <laughs> not Scott. <laughs> Mike, we thought which would be funny. And maybe that, <laughs> and there's another Mike. In there. You know, <laughs> or something like that. So that's where we were going. And that's why it was Mike and Mike. So. Mike and it Mike. Was, the show. It was, it was you save room yeah, by yeah. you, you save room by using ampersand instead of A and D for and, you know. Yeah, we did. Is that what you did? Oh good, good, good. Uh, every trick every trick I do for 280 characters for Twitter if I got a rant. Yeah. <laughs> 250 characters? <laughs> Only 250. It sounded like he had more. Like how well, many I don't because well, he because he told no, us he, he, no yeah, he, he like, it sounded like you supplied him with more. No, like, no, he. Nope. A lot of that was him. Tony Paco is like, how did he like, you know, like that's a lot of information. Yoko, well, that was part of the team. Yeah, uh, yeah. you guys are Lebanese. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. Uh, <laughs> Uh, chips? I mean, I'm Think, sorry. Um, I'll go roadmap with you some other time, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always and, work me off, Mike. And That's obviously, cool. Yoko chips again. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even question what's a Yoko chip. He didn't say, he didn't even he acknowledge it like he knew what he was saying. Weird. I was chip. <laughs> There's bags of Yoko chips that show up in uh, Franco and in our book Spot on Adventure in the background. There's bags of Yoko, oh, chip. Yoko chips. Yeah. I want to say hello to the Vajunct. Uh, what's up? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but uh, sounds Lebanese. Um. <laughs> we, we actually this happened a few days ago. We have a bag of sun chips. My daughter picked out some sunshine, <laughs> right? And she said, Daddy, did you ever try these? And I say, I talked to him all, like at least one of the week. She's like, what? I'm like, oh, no, nothing. <laughs> I'll try it. <laughs> we call them Yoko chips. <laughs> well, it was well worth the thought you guys put into that because that thing was amazing. You know, I uh, I, I uploaded. Yeah, he ran I, with it. I, 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 You know, it's technically our 10th anniversary, guys. Because yeah. we started the Oya podcast really? back in 2010. Well, that's summer. why that's yeah. why we had Johnny uh, uh, Jamie come on because we had yeah. we had the 10th anniversary. We knew, yeah. and and we are so meticulous in our planning that we figured out it was the 10th anniversary after we submitted for the video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we didn't even put it in the video. Well, congratulations, <laughs> fellas! But here's yeah. uh, here's some images of some old episodes. There's one guy. Yeah, there I remember that. That's me in the Phantom Zone. Yeah, that's me in the Phantom Zone. Leah Hogan. 
Mm -hmm. Frank on a tub. <laughs> the the oh, yeah. The Peroni oh, episode. Very nice. Oh, what, 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 yeah, Katie Cook or somebody was on that or no? I don't I can't either, yeah, I'm assuming it was probably Katie. Good hair with Gail Simone. Good hair. With Gail. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Cut up Franco, of course. See, I, you know, Mike, you just replaced Franco in my anger. That's all. That's Shut up, Franco. Yeah. Exactly. And then, uh, and then this shoe oh, coffee. Yeah. Shoe yeah, coffee. Shoe coffee. <laughs> yeah. I like how I'm always screaming on all this coffee. <laughs> I, I I know. I'll I'll save it for the next show. We've got a couple others like Jimmy the Muscle floating a sulfur biscuit. Yeah. Like that, There's you know. one I drew of Klinger one time, too, that we have where he's got yeah. chest hair. Yes, that's right. He's wearing the Mud Hens jersey. Yeah. Yep. Incidentally. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh, and, and if I may, guys, do you mind if I promote uh, next Friday on Work Balloon? No, I was uh, going to tell you to. Yeah, do it. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is, but do it. I, do originally, I was just going to have uh, the Benson sisters and Tom King hang nice. out like we always do and just have something new to talk about. And the Bensons are like, Hey, it's during San Diego. Why don't yeah. we approximate like an after hours hangout? And uh, you know, Hey, we're not going to call it Barcon because obviously that's got a bad connotation these days. Mm. Uh, but, but they were ridiculous. And they're like, Hey, it'll be John con. And I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> and they're like, it's like bathroom. <laughs> yeah. But no, actually, sadly yeah. uh, it is John con. Yeah. And there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'll tell you, it's, I mean, really, <laughs> I has, truly, I, and seriously, I take nothing for granted. And all of you are part of this as well. The friendships that I've made doing 15 years of Word Balloon still floor me. Yeah, you're a good man, Johnny. Well, yeah, you guys, Johnny. You guys always had that leather couch together. <laughs> this is, we met. That's true. Yes. That's how the we FX met. show, that's a good brother bear put us together. That's absolutely And I'll right. always have that food on that you're sitting on. Yes, that's right. That's and right. I always, I always know what you say when you're falling asleep too. Your catchphrase is because <laughs> I experienced great. you at the airport. Yes, you did. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, that's exactly. great. Hilarious. Oh. So uh, our, our the, code con. the people that are joining me for uh, Guess you're just joining us. I'm gonna bring up my uh, email, but I can tell you right now off the bat, Dan Slot is coming on. Uh, oh, Nicholas oh. Scott, uh nice. Gary Ordway is coming on. Is that all one stream, and you're going to tag yeah. them in? Yeah, and they're, oh, what they're cool. going to do is it'll be the four of us, Tom and the Benson sisters, and then people will d dip in for like 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, that's cool. And, um, here, I'll, I'm bringing up Julie. Hello, Julie. Mm -hmm. Hello, Levan. Exactly. Hello, Julie. So here, let's see. Hi, Cheryl. Hello Hi, there. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Okay. Hello there. So Hello, Hello there. there. Tom King. That wasn't Obi-Wan. That was that Santa that you talked to. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. Shelly Shelly Bond. Santa. Hello there. Uh, I like Shelly uh, Bond. Jody Hauser, Dan Slot. Uh, I know Charlie all these Nick. people. Yeah, yeah. Um, Vita Ayala, Ben Percy, Liam Sharp, and uh, Chris Cantwell. And then we're waiting to hear back from a handful of others. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's nice seriously. And you're also so you were talking to me about it, so you gotta you gotta promote it. You're you're maybe gonna get some giveaway stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff happening, right? Yes, and thank you because yes, uh, um, what we're gonna do is because we have so many uh, creators on, um, we're gonna run a couple raffles, and people will uh, tip word balloon. To get their question asked, nice, and they will be in a drawing. And I've also talked. I've talked to AfterShock Comics and uh, a, a little shop called uh, Oh Yeah Comics in uh, Harris uh, Harrison. Uh, I know those guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, we'll be giving away graphic novels uh, to the people who have the best, uh, you know, um, uh, questions. And is I this going to be an all day, or do you have a set time, or is it going to be start, like an all day? No, we're going to start um, Friday evening, and um, nice. You know, I, I we haven't set a specific time, but even uh, the Bensons were like, "Hey, maybe we should start earlier, uh, just to accommodate everybody, because we're gonna have East Coast people and West like Coast." Like a four-hour show or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, you, cool. you start on Friday and then just go all the way to Sunday. You'll be, you'll be. Yeah. Good. Well, you can do Monday. you can do like a stream. I think the maximum is eight hours. I don't expect to do eight hours, mm. but but it really was nice. So so that's nice. So uh, next. Uh, Next Friday, you know, watch on social media. I'm sure I'll put posts on I Like Pink and certainly my Twitter feed and everything else. But uh, John Con. I like John. That. John Con. John. It's like a Jerry Lewis telethon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Timpani. Lady. Lady. Francis uh, colored this uh, great uh, image. 
and uh, it uh, it was originally drawn by uh, Tim Seeley and uh, Sean Dove. I'm oh, gonna nice. Mike Norton wants to come on for a Mike Norton minute. Why didn't you invite me on the show? I got. <laughs> well, you could just talk way. about him, and then people could say, "Where is he? It's a mystery." Julie, sure. my phone keeps ringing. <laughs> it reminds me of when uh, back in 2006 we did a 24-hour podcast, and um, we did it at, at uh, Dark Tower, Middle Age Thor's uh, store. Yeah, I know that guy exactly. And, uh, and we call him Middle Age Thor because he has a nice long ponytail. He looks like can he could have been an Asgardian. Uh, can you lift this hammer for me? Give uh. <laughs> me the uh, muscles in that Asgardian. Of course, yeah, he he's an Asgardian. He's a floating hey, sulfur biscuit ass hey, dude. I'm an also, Guardian, dude. In the short time, in the short time that we were talking to Ted, um, I, I know I caught it. Uh, we talked to him for two two hours, but yeah. uh, mm -hmm. in a short span of a window, I happened to look glance down and I saw Walter Simonson was watching us. Steve Rotterdam for Aftershock was oh, watching cool. us. And oh Jan, God, Michael, awesome. Jan Michael Friedman was watching us. Oh, that's, that's great! Like, that's like all these people were. I'm like, wow, everybody's watching it. That's fantastic. Seriously. It is the highest compliment when the creators pop yeah. up. I was talking to Charlie Adler earlier. John Lehman popped on. I love when Walter shows up. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So, hey, how you know? And when I you were that. talking, I, I was watching your talk with Sinkevich last night, and that was awesome. Yeah. Now, I'm a, guys, I swear, seriously, I, I say a prayer and thank the Lord for everybody and baby Jesus already. Baby Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. For, yeah, bless for, Christ. For seriously, every, I mean, I, everyone is incredibly kind to You're me. welcome. Even when I'm an asshole to them on, a, a, say, a podcast where someone's lighting is too bright. <laughs> well, let's be clear, or their I microphone doesn't work. <laughs> What's that, buddy? I couldn't. I swear I could Lighting or not? <laughs> Angry Yoko chips. I'm, I'm, seriously, Mike, I'm going to hug you when I see you, and I expect no. a punch in the mouth when I see you. I needed a <laughs> yeah. need a vagina, but it won't hurt because you got to remove it. Right on the lips. There you go. So, oh, Harold. <laughs> send me, seriously, and and truly, I, I I will gift you a headset. How about that? Ooh. Do you have a Do you have a Mac or do you have a PC? Honestly, I'm asking. I have a PC. Oh, great. Okay, great. Well, well, then I'll send you a headset. You got an extra headset laying around? Yes. When Johnny you, does. Johnny, to be fair, when you send it to him, could you send it with a DJ Jesse Jeff air freshener? <laughs> How'd you get that? I don't even know where it is. I put it somewhere, and now I can't even remember where it is. And it meant the world to me, and now I don't know where it is. But I hope your wife burned it. No, I put it somewhere so nothing would happen to it, and now I can't remember where I put it. Well, you got to so smell for it because it smells good. Well, it's gotta yeah. be like that. It smells like summertime. Uh, it's got to be that Superman thing that you lost forever and then you refound. So oh, shout out. Be a fun surprise when you dig it up, man. Hey, Mike, what happened when when Lori heard the uh, the Jamie Farr video? She, oh, this is actually really funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting at the counter. She, you, some of you have been to my house. It's it's uh, only Frank has been to my house, but I'm on I'm on the counter. I'm sitting on the stools. She's on the kitchen side, and she's pouring she's pouring herself a drink or whatever. And I just, I'm like, oh, what, what's this? And I just start listening, and all of a sudden she hears Jamie Barr's voice, which is very distinct. And she hears, oh, the old yeah, podcast guy. And she, 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 she has something in her hand. She, she has a cup in her hand. She's like, what? And she probably just turns and hits something on the counter and spills all over the place. She was like, what, what, what's going on? She, she goes, you're talking to Jamie Farr? She goes, what? Are you guys having a podcast with Jamie Farr? I was like, no, no, it's just a cameo. And then she just was so excited. She's like, this is the best thing that you've ever done. I go, I didn't do it. Scoot, Franco and I are writing this, and it's like, you know, and they say, it's like, it may take seven days to respond. Literally, early afternoon, the next day. Oh. But we were joking because we, yeah, we wrote the thing, and then it was like it was like eleven thirty, twelve o'clock last night, or or something. <laughs> two nights ago, yeah, or two nights ago, whenever it was, we said that, and then we started joking because it's us and we're we're dumb. But yeah. we started we started joking. Imagine if we got a response now, and he yeah. got it in the middle of the night, and he's in his pajamas, <laughs> and he and he's like, oh, I got a cameo video. Oh yeah, what the hell is a Yoko chips? Okay, we kind of went on with that for like about twenty minutes, and we were laughing and stuff like that. Literally the next morning at like seven in the morning, I get a text from John. Oh my God, he did it. 
<laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. And you seriously, can tell from, you can tell but, from the video it is bright and early in the morning. But I said, I said to Johnny because before I even before I even saw it, he said, "Oh my God, he did it." Jamie Farr did the video, and, and I texted back to Johnny. I'm like, "Was he wearing his pajamas?" Because I wanted to know. <laughs> I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> We were the official mud hens pajamas. He's I, I know it wasn't. I know it was expensive. I'm willing to chip in and do a second one. A part two. Well, <laughs> and it's the oh yeah podcast guys again. And Mike and the other Mike. <laughs> Wait a minute. I want to clarify which Mike is more. Which I, Mike like, is more. I like that Yoko Chips is personally re funding my retirement. <laughs> I want to do Yoko a Chips. I'm, I'm 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 putting I'm putting money for part two. My, oh, yeah. my face hurt from smiling. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I was sitting down already when I yeah. watched it. I was I was shocked. I'm saying, uh, yeah, Yoko chips. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. I could not we believe should, it. Um, <laughs> we should ask him <laughs> in the next one. Like crazy. We should That's say, some, you've, you have, when you've been to Chicago, have you by chance ever had Harold's chicken? Harold's chicken. I'm going to have a picture of Harold's chicken right here. <laughs> yeah, hey, Artie, look, Harold. Here we are with our selfie. <laughs> I can't wait till his name comes up. You can see who's watching these. I can't wait till oh, yeah. he starts watching these. <laughs> yeah, I, like I can't wait till he walks in this door back here when he comes <laughs> to see him. Uh, he and comes here like once a year still, usually for Mud Hens games, but there's no baseball this summer. So I don't think mm -hmm. he's going to make it with the COVID and everything. So right. hopefully oh, next man. summer things are back to Dude. normal and he comes to town. Because the news Dude. always does a story about him too when he comes to town. Like Jamie Farr is in town. And that's cool. They interview there, there's him. Absolutely, so. There's absolutely no chance that he has gotten this far in the podcast and is watching this. But, <laughs> oh, no, no, but no, no, no. on the off chance that he is, I wanted to put it on record that we are huge fans of, of yeah. Jamie Farr. <laughs> and thank you for doing that. Yeah, Nash was a staple in our house growing up because my dad watched it all the time. We I was telling artists. Johnny, I did a, I did a rewatch. I'm doing a rewatch. I'm in the middle of it. Mm. And I haven't, I haven't heard the Nash uh, podcast, but I really want to. And I yep. did hear the Alan Alda podcast episode where they had all the cast members on, and it was mm -hmm. terrific, amazing. Yeah. Oh, we should get a cameo from Gilbert Gottfried. Ow! 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 Oh, yeah. you again. Oh, Yo chips. Yo it, chips. Is <laughs> We, it, it always starts out with the face. Yeah, oh, it's Capo yeah. Basso again. <laughs> Not you again. I wish I would have uh, thought to ask Ted about uh, the voiceover people he's worked with. Like, I'm sure he's worked with Gilbert on the Aladdin oh, yeah. cartoon. Yeah, Aladdin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He mentioned Dan from Simpsons. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Look how much uh, Gilbert was, uh, Mike? How much? 200. It says 199. Oh. No, no. Ouch! Oh, no. no. Alright, we'll let we'll let Mike uh, uh, we'll let Skoke uh, call in uh, when he has those audience call ins because yeah. Mike always is mad to get in. He's got fast fingers. Yeah, I've been there like it's been like four times I've gotten on there and talked to him. One time he uh, <laughs> he insulted me. One time he called me um, he called me a a, a guinea, oh. which was um, kind of an honor coming from him. But um, I think those are fifteen. Kevin. I, I, I don't want a curly G cameo, Kevin. I don't think it, <laughs> they're only fifteen dollars. I, I don't think it's worth the fifty cents that he charges. Ooh, what about a Jazzy a Jeff, Jeff cameo? Just Jazzy, not Jeff. A Jazzy Jeff. He was. He's he's half Curly Howard and half uh, Jackie <laughs> Roger <laughs> Jr. If, if, think of your favorite celebrity, like Sammy. Really, man. You know, I, I'm hey, serious. Man. Let's all let's all really take a moment and appreciate. Because really, man, that I don't know those videos I saw. It's like, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that's the thing. My buddy, my buddy who writes for the Wall Street Journal, I sent him the Jamie Farr thing, and he's scanning, looking at cameo, and he's suggesting celebrities. I'm like, Jamie Farr, man, is that combination of kitsch and yeah. like right. genuine sweetness, authenticity. Just, yeah. Yes, authenticity. Well said, sir. Absolutely. The only, the only other one I can think of is maybe uh, Chevy Chase for like. Eight hundred dollars, or something really? like that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, he's got to be up there. That's, Christopher that's Lloyd would be good. 
Is he on there too? Hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd want. To, actually, I'd rather he'd be like uh, you know uh, a seventy-year-old Jim Ignatowski, frankly. Chevy Chase oh. is five hundred dollars. Who is Chevy? Chevy Chase, five hundred dollars. There you go. No thanks. See? No thanks. How much? Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Look up Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Yeah. That's going to be your job tonight. This is good. I'm I'd rather I'd rather do five Jamie Fars. Exactly. <laughs> How about Wendy Williams? She on there? No, she probably is. Actually, is two hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Whoa! Who is number? Christopher Lloyd. Uh, oh, that's because because Cameo probably gets eighty-eight dollars, and Christopher right. Lloyd wants two hundred or two hundred and fifty or whatever it is. Well, eighty-eight that's miles an hour. Two hundred and eight. Okay. 88. Oh, there you go. 288. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> two shots of simple damning on cameo. She's had, you know, she needs two spaces to accommodate her um, figure. It's How about that girl? Spelled with an S, though. Yeah. yeah. But I know it. I, How I about knew Adele? It. Adele, I get her on there. No, it's Katie Farr is the official mascot of the uh, yeah, podcast, Kevin. Good Lord, of course he is. I think, I think we're his mascots at this point. Yeah. Wendy. Wendy would be the only one I want on there. How are you doing, Holly? Oh, yeah, a podcast. If Robin Reigns is uh, five hundred and Alexa Bliss is three ninety nine, it's got to be a big price. All right, then. Oh, that's yeah, that's well. I know, like Jabbar is on there for like six hundred bucks, and a few other athletes, top athletes and stuff. But it's like, hey, man, guess what? I had thirty minutes with Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and uh, thanks to uh, Franco uh, pointing out that he was uh, writing Sherlock Holmes' brother. That's uh, true. That's true. So. What about Ozzy Gian from Sox? We could have him swear. <laughs> right, Ozzy. Hi. Thanks for your call. We get an Ozzy Gian and Antonio Banderas on at the same time, and we won't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Ozzy Gian doing 50 bucks. 50 bucks? <laughs> I should be in really Holy shit. I like once a week. Holy shit. I like I like how art went from I'm never gonna get this thing. Wait, fifty bucks hey, I'm, gonna get it. <laughs> I'm gonna get him on my morning talk show. Kevin, uh, yeah, you, uh, Artie, get him you, for your dad's you, birthday, you, Artie. You should Wish your dad you a happy birthday. to do a promo or uh, Ozzy to do a promo for your show, Artie. Oh, I would Great. love it. You should totally do that. That's a great you idea. You can't see. You never know what he's saying. Baseball, American baseball is small, 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 small ball, small ball. You know, bunting, lot of bunting. I'm like what? And he, he would get the reliever. He just said, What the big guy? The big guy. He wouldn't even go left. He'd just go like this. The big guy. Touchdown? No, the big guy. <laughs> yeah, I like Ozzy. I'm a big fan. Rayski, my buddy Rayski, met him at Target one time. Ozzy sure. was shopping at Target and he saw Ozzy. And then I get a, a text on my phone. It's like a picture of him and Ozzy Gian at Target. <laughs> like, what the heck, man? My, Mike so, and uh, Franco, have you guys run into. Uh, sports celebrities in New York and stuff, or just randomly? I, All the time. I, they live. They live in my backyard. Patrick I'm Ewing. How many into, it? I am not a sports guy, so you have to remember. So one day, many many years ago, maybe almost twenty years at this point, I I I got into a little altercation with two two baseball players because I didn't know who they were, and they didn't <laughs> appreciate that I didn't know who they were. Oh. Uh, it was Derek Jeter and a guy named Narblock. Yeah, Narblock. Yeah. Chuck Narblock. Yeah. Chuck Narblock. They were at a bar, and I really didn't know like, who they were. And I was trying to get a drink at the time I was drinking, so this has to be over 20 years ago. And uh, they kind of looked, gave me this look like, do you know who we are? And then Chuck Narblock was like, hey, man, what are you doing? I was like, I'm trying to get through to get a drink. And they, they all, like, everyone around them looked at me like I was. I was a Nazi or something. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, you must I'm be a Red Sox fan, me. yeah. Uh, and then they got so pissed off. They they talked to a manager, and they got a, and the manager like freaked out and and cordoned off a section of the bar for them to sit privately and be private. Wow, and Jesus! Yeah. Oh, yes. Get over it's your. It's not problem. required. You know who they are. You way, know? way back in the day, there there's uh there there wasn't much up here when I was a kid, but uh there was uh this little. Uh, strip mall, and they got Mookie Wilson to come down and sign oh, autographs. Yeah, Mookie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, Mookie. Absolutely. Yeah. So I got I got an autograph from Mookie Wilson, and I didn't know who he was. <laughs> so. I'm at the fridge. He was cool. Me and my dad oh. and Gordy was like three years old. Refrigerator. I'm at the fridge. Absolutely. I'm at uh, Jamie Farr at the LPGA Kroger Classic <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. Hey, son. How are you? Wow. I wonder <laughs> if Anthony <laughs> Daniels is on Cameo. <laughs> C3PO. Oh, Hello. Or are you I'm and McGregor? I'm going to call Ozzy for sure. Hello, Yoko Chaps. 
<laughs> I used to um, work at uh, on 42nd and Lex. I used to work for Pfizer, whose headquarters is, is right over there. So uh, the Roosevelt is over on, uh, which is where apparently all the baseball teams would stay when they were playing the Mets or Yankees. Sure. So when sure. I would be out for lunch, there'd be autograph hounds sitting out there all the time. So I would walk past and people would come out and people they would lose their minds when these, these guys came out. Sure. And I didn't know who they were. And I, but I'm just trying to get through the crowd to get to lunch. So half the time I would run into a baseball player or a football player or something, and they'd look at me like, what do you want me to sign? I'm like, uh, I'm just trying to get through. <laughs> and they're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, I, like, I like that Mike is pissed off half the teams on the Eastern Seaboard because he wanted <laughs> something to eat or drink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, human look, human necessity. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't interrupt me. While I, I actually, one of the guys stopped me and was like, you want a picture? And I took a picture with him. I don't know where that picture is to this day, and I don't even know who he was to this day, but apparently he was a famous baseball player of some sort. I don't know who he was. <laughs> and that man was? I really don't know. I just found that. So well, I think he's only 50 this, bucks. This man. is the point where it's Mike bigger. Megan pulls out pictures of him and Tom Seaver, him and Nolan Ryan. Exactly. Exactly. Roger Clemens. One, of my, one of my biggest regrets of all time, though, is I did not take a picture with Muhammad Ali when I had the chance. Oh, I, you know, I wish I had. And again, this is before phone cameras. I met him in '91. I I had an interview on a micro cassette. I have no idea where that micro cassette is, and it kills me. But he was so sweet and lovely. And I, I know I've told this story before on the mm -hmm. show, so I won't I won't go through it again. But yeah, that was that truly was like a great moment for me. And working in sports for 16 years. It was real, like Hank Aaron and Mickey Mantle and Yogi Berra and Frank Robinson and you know I mean and uh, football I mean good lord uh, tons of football people tons of Joe Joe Namath and mean Joe Graham yeah that's cool I yeah. mean it was it really was like I cannot believe I am meeting these people yeah and, I and, with, you know, uh, and I most of them were great with, uh, yeah I worked with uh, the New York uh, uh, quarterback uh, Phil uh, the Giants quarterback Jesus. oh Phil, yeah Phil Sims Phil, Phil Sims yeah. And that was a giant of a man. I remember I, I met him, and I, I was my job to follow him around and film him, not stalk him. I was getting paid. Um, <laughs> and I remember, and I'm not a big football fan, but I, I remember uh, standing next to him, and he I'm a, I'm a pretty tall guy. I'm like 6'3", and, and he was taller than I was, and his shoulders were broader. Wow. And I'm like, wow, this is this is a big guy. You know, and he's a quarterback. And then I remember the next, the following Sunday, which was like three or four days after that, uh, I saw him on TV in a game and he was the smallest freaking guy on the field. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> oh yeah. But, um, I, I, again, because of my association at the score and being there for 10 years and then another six years of sporting news, a lot of the bears I knew over the years. And in my last three years at, at uh, WBBM, the news station, we carried the bears games on radio and did the nice. post game from our station. And several former players would be analysts on the show and it was like, literally, Jim Schwantz, an old an old player, was like, Trump. "Hey, John Shanky Sutra, so great to see you." And that was my nickname, Shanky. Cool. And I'm like, "How do you remember me?" He's like, "Oh, you're funny as hell." And so we would get it's like, "All right, now with traffic, here's John Sutra," and he'd go, "Shanky." Oh, he was on. You would hear this man say, "Shanky," on the yeah, air. yes, exactly. <laughs> and and then it was great because then callers. Would call it, guys. I have not been on sports radio every day, yeah. literally for twenty years, literally yeah. that long ago. People remember, and, it is, and all these people, yes, would call up and go, "Hey, is that really you, Shaky?" And it's like, "Yes, it is." It's like, yeah. "Hey, my God, it's nice to hear you over by there. That's great. That's <laughs> nice." And it's like, "Thanks, man. Nice to, see yeah. you. Nice to hear you." So yeah, well, it was we nice. were. I forget where we were. You and I were walking. Yeah, I think it was in Chicago. It had to where be. We, had, we were having dinner. I think we were having yeah. dinner at that. Across the street from uh, the uh, Donald Stevenson Center, where the Wizard mm -hmm. Chicago shows yep. are, I was right. there. That's the first time yeah. I went went out with you guys. No, no, you weren't. You weren't there. It was Johnny and it I. It was we with Artie and somewhere. Zod. We got put in a different section than you. Yeah, because right. you can yeah, pull yeah, away. Yeah. yeah, we were all there. I remember that. That's right. And then we started walking, product. and Johnny and I were talking, and this guy just stops him out of nowhere. He was sitting down in the cordoned off yeah. area, and he goes, and he and he pulled John or or what do you call it? Shaky, yeah, shaky. Yeah, yeah, shaky. Yeah, shaky. Um, and I was like, "Whoa, what the hell?" And Shaky chips. Johnny's a celebrity. What's going on? He's it's the shirt. it's the weird. And also at comic shows, when people put yeah. two and two together, Steve Wacker, the old Marvel editor, grew up downstate Illinois, and now he's you know in charge of Marvel and animation and everything. 
And he's like, I used to listen to you on the score. Or Fraction. Fraction heard me on the score and he would listen uh -huh. and stuff. And it, it, seriously, it's like, that is so nice. Because again, I mean, fuck, it was 20 years ago. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop it off. You know what's going to come. Are any of those recordings available, like downloaded or something somewhere? Me, me on my air checks of me? Yeah, like the old shows. I have Chicago so, Lightning Bolt section. I was yeah. so, I, I truly, already, I was so embarrassed by my first 10 years of air checks. I've kept so few things. I've got a, I've got just a handful of things, and I and not even MP3 ready to like play on the show or anything like but that. None of your characters and voices and stuff. Oh no, I've got some. You know, I'll be honest. Um, back then, I did a lot of um, ethnic humor where I would imitate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mind doing Mike Tyson because I think my, much like Bill Cosby, well, he's a character. He, yeah. yeah, I mean, his voice is so distinct. I don't feel bad doing it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, I used to do Reggie White, who also had a very distinct voice. Uh, <laughs> I did, I did Hispanic characters. I did, I did global dialects and a lot of various things because, and then, and I didn't do it with any meanness or right. malice. But I do accept the current social norms, so a lot of that stuff I wouldn't feel comfortable playing. I do have, you know, something. I do have a montage that I put on the Word Balloon feed of a lot of different voices I did. And like I did a commercial for I can't even remember, but I did Stallone and and um, Burgess Meredith having a Rocky and Mick conversation <laughs> and stuff like that. So I'll I'll find that and I'll I'll bring it out and we'll play it on the on the show sometime. Maybe next time when we do ghost stories, I'll play it. But no, honestly, because I I do I I'm I'm kind of glad that a lot of that stuff is buried and nobody hears it because it is the kind of stuff that if it did came out. I would probably have to make a public apology. I yeah, know. yeah. This it was looser times. Yeah. yeah. And again, yeah. I, I get it. And I would I mean that literally you I have you don't have to make an apology because you just did it. There you go. Well, you know, because right. I mean, really a friend of mine has a podcast and he's an old score host. And he's like, Come on, do X voice. And I'm like, No, can't mm -hmm. do it anymore, man. I, I respect what's going on and it's it's I totally get it. And it's like I, I don't want to I mean, got it, you know, I had Bernie Capel on from the Love Boat. And yeah. for the first five years of his uh, getting getting bit parts on shows, he was playing Hispanic characters, and he's a Jewish gentleman. Yeah. And he said, "I mean, even eighty-seven years old, and he's like, hey, if I, you know, if I took anybody's job, I feel horrible. I'm I'm sorry that wasn't a big deal back then, but that I certainly do regret if I if I kept a Hispanic person from getting a job. So now we only do Gilbert Godfrey. Ah, oh yes. Ah, oh, right. thank oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear it this week? Uh, so? uh, I did. And uh, who was on? That would be uh, Alan, uh, Adam Arkin and Alan Arkin. Yes. Jimmy Farr? Together, father and son. Good stuff. That guy's a genius. Good, was good. Both I love Adam as well as son. Good I was laughing because I just heard you doing him. That's that's what I kept hearing. <laughs> and he was, how about that high cackle laugh? when he's delighted of like some of those stories and some of like, Gilbert's jokes and stuff. It was so great. And I mean, the guy is a, a sketch comedy genius. He's, I mean, really like, a, I mean, we lost Carl Reiner a few weeks ago, but really is like in that kind of group of incredible comedy performers. And I mean, if you guys haven't watched uh, the Comiskey Method with him and Michael Douglas and he's Michael Douglas's older friend. Oh, he's, uh, he's the coast. Genius. She watched the whole thing. She loves it. It's yeah. a great show. It's a really great show. It's so, really good. Yes. Yeah. In-laws. I, I love the in-laws. How great is that movie? It's the it's the best. And and again, who who thinks it's a Serpentine good idea to show. remake? To Serpentine. Remake, Serpentine. Yeah, who's, who thinks it's a good idea to remake that movie with... Oh. I mean, I love Albert Brooks and again, Michael Douglas. Run. But oh, it was so bad. It's so the re remake is so bad. <laughs> and and that movie, you're right. Well, let me tell you, so, you're right, you know, flames on my car. All right, you know. <laughs> oh. And and he tells great stories about uh, that the project coming together, the original in Moss. Oh, yeah. oh really? I was watching Peter Falk on a TV show, and I'm like, I think I can work with him. I think we'd be funny together, you know. And just the just pay of pigs, really. <laughs> The best is, yeah, you saw that picture of me of Kennedy? Yeah, he was nuts about me. <laughs> because, yeah, he knew you? He was nuts about me. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you meet him? From Cuba. <laughs> hey, pigs. You know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> oh, it's such a great... And uh, Ricky Libertini is the, uh, the, the, the dictator general. 
She that's what, that's got to be one of my favorite movies. I, you know, when people ask me, like, on the spot, name your favorite movies, you know, and uh, I'm always at a loss, but that's one of my favorite movies is The In-Laws, the original In-Laws. Mike Green. I haven't seen that in a long time. I got to rewatch that. We Mike should do a re we should do a, 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 a rewatch. We should do a watch along or whatever it is. Hey, you know, though, honestly, Mike, um, I'm always worried about comedies because you don't want to make fun of a comedy. You know what I mean? That's oh, hard. That's it's hard to do. Honestly, I mean, because we've we've mentioned other comedies, and I'm always like, no, oh, man, because then you, you want to hear the jokes. You want, I mean, if anything, that's true. That's true. You're I, right. We should, uh, if anything, we should have a a watch party like on Facebook, and I'll watch it and just type comments or something like that. Because yeah, it's a, oh, it's so good. God, it's yeah. so good. you know what? Another of my favorite comedies, Midnight Run. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Run. And you know that was supposed to be Eddie Murphy. And yeah, Stallone. I want to say. Yeah, something like that. It was. It was. It was. It's almost supposed to be like an action movie. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. You no, know, Charles, Charles Grodin. I love Charles I love Grodin him. is so pitch perfect in that movie. Oh my god. You know another one. Uh, so I married an axe murderer, and that mm -hmm. five minutes that Charles Grodin is in the movie, and uh, Anthony Lapaglia is trying to commandeer his car, and he's like, "I'm a police officer. I need your car." He's like, "No." No, <laughs> and it's so, it's so quintessential Charles Grodin. The best, his best movie, early seventies, The Heartbreak Kid, the original Heartbreak Kid. Oh, I haven't seen that in like thirty years. United. Oh my god! And he's in like he's on his honeymoon, and he sees Sybil Shepherd, and this is nineteen seventy two, perfect Sybil Shepherd at her absolute. Oh my goodness! And he <laughs> regrets having been just married, and it's this like it really is this like amazing comedy of him avoiding his wife and, and just everything she does just annoys him even more and eddie albert from green acres plays civil shepherd's asshole father Ooh. oh, oh. oh. i thought his plays <laughs> 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 played her butthole exactly. <laughs> it's an amazing scene of him trying to buy off charles grodin he's like i love your daughter sir i want to marry her you mean to say you would spend you know you would pass up a thousand dollars I love your daughter, sir. Five thousand dollars. I love your daughter, sir. Ten thousand dollars. And he just like his loud his voice keeps getting louder as the mic goes up. And it's this awesome scene. And he is at his quintessential jerkiness, uh, Eddie Albert. Wasn't wasn't that a remake of a uh, of a Ben Stiller movie? It's the other way around, but yes. Oh yeah. Okay. The uh, and and actually, I don't mind the the remake. It's okay. Can't hold a candle to the original. It is so. Um, Elaine May's daughter, Jeannie Berlin, plays the wife. And it's so great because she really like you know she she snorts when she laughs, she's gross when she eats, and you just watch Charles Grodin just absolutely become horrified. Like, how did I marry this woman? My like, God, oh, I got my wife, a daddy. Exactly. Damn. <laughs> so yeah, unbelievable. Anyway, are we done? Are we are we wiped out, boys? We're at. I think so. We're at I actually, gotta run. I got. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, it's late for. I know it's late for the East Coast boys. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to stay for the postseason. Uh, the post show wrap, wrap yeah. up time. I understand. Special uh, right. shout out to uh, listener John Freeman for commissioning me to do an all oh, yeah poster, which oh, I yeah. posted on. Oh, I like man. man. Yeah. 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 Before we leave, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I have, I have it here. Wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Is something. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Look at that thing. <laughs> Harold's already. It makes you hungry for Harold. I know. I might go tonight. Kevin Bixby's texting me. And I'm so <laughs> to go. He's like, let's go get Harold's. I might you have know, to go. His forehead. That's an awesome job, Scoot. Of Scoot and you, sell yeah. it C2E2. The next C2E2 I will, C2E2 yeah. It has to okay. be friend. I will. Mm hmm. Has to be. Yeah. We got to blow one up to give the Heralds to. Yeah, we'll just hold, 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 hold on. I'm going to hang in my office. All hold 12 listeners it. will buy it from me. Yeah, hold on to it for 20, 2022. I should add <laughs> Jamie Farr to it. <laughs> you can put him in the clouds talking like God. Like, uh, like yeah. Christ. In, in pajamas. Jamie yeah. Farr in pajamas. <laughs> With a Toledo Mudhead's hat on. He needs, a, he needs a tuft of chest hair coming out of His it. reflection could be on Franco's forehead. <laughs> I see yeah. you have chest hair. And, of course, Yoko chips. <laughs> <laughs> he said it twice. Yeah. Well, because yeah, there's uh, Art and uh, Franco and, 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 of course, Yoko chips. Of course. <laughs> Yoko chips. <laughs> of course. Because it was from Chips. Yoko. Yes, I, I have to. <laughs> you have Chips said awesome. my price too. Oh, there we go. You already get your first sale, uh, Scoot. Yeah, okay. Bixby will buy it. Bill Bixby. 
And uh, there we go. That poster makes me want to stop drawing glove picks. So draw another poster, Scoot. It's the <laughs> I'm glad that Tad Stones had that glove in his house, too. That was yeah. <laughs> one on the wall. <laughs> I need one in my house. It's a theme. <laughs> That's the mascot of the show is Johnny's glove. The glove. The Jamie Farr should have did a war in one glove. Oh, like, yeah. And the just glove. had the glove on his shoulder. It's we should have had him say Mike and the other Mike in the glove. In the glove. He could have had the glove over over his chair or his shoulder or something. Gary Payton, the glove. And the Virgin. The Virgin. I think I would pay $100 to hear Jamie Foxx say Virgin. Yeah, it'd be worth it. <laughs> listen, listen, seriously, guys. Next time we got to tell ghost stories because we've been yeah. Yeah, yeah, we will. But I, 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 I got some new ones. I didn't. Um, I, I I thought I'd never see this, but I want to thank Ted Stones for coming on the show. Yeah. And, and Jamie Farr for for yeah. coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, Jamie what an Farr incredible show. show. I, I think I, it's I really reached think, its peak now. I was about to say. I think this has to be the last. Podcast this might be the yeah, end. We have to drop yeah. the mic after this. How do we, how do we top this? this what time. episode gonna, is this, Artie? We're going to reboot. I don't know, like 407, maybe? Something like that. No, yeah, think, One, 178, yeah. maybe? Yeah. We got to get Dean that. Kane on the next one. I'm busy that night. <laughs> <laughs> Superboy Prime. That's all Prime. Well, who else is Superman we could get? We're just dressed up someone like we need. Superman. We need old uh, '80s uh, Superboy from. Uh, That'd be good, Gerard. 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 Yeah, Gerard Christopher. Or Gerard. Yeah. yeah, Gerard Christopher. Yeah, yeah. We'll get him up there. Or Jeff you know, East. We got to get Jeff East. Uh, or Clark before he, uh, you know, when he throws the uh, green uh, icicle into the uh, mm -hmm. Arctic. Oh, the oh, that guy! I met that guy. I met the baby too. <laughs> I got their auto I just got their autographs. I, I uncovered their photos. They all count. You know we could get. Count. I know I could get real easy. My childhood Batman. I could get original art. Original art. Original art. You know, only if that. only if Ray shows up with it. Yeah. Al. 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 <laughs> Al. Like, you gotta say, remember Al and Barbara. His wife. You gotta, you gotta send Al. You gotta send Al. You gotta send Al. Your Origin, uh, original like, art and and Al will do a cameo together for twenty bucks. Yeah. 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 And he's got to hold the red phone in front of him. I don't even know if Al is around anymore. I don't know what happened to that guy. <laughs> he probably got beat up by a joker. Yeah, he's, he's probably still there. I remember him being real hairy. Uh, Skoke and I are going to Al. We're laughing at a guy who's potentially dead. So. <laughs> he's probably alive. He was about my dad's age, maybe a little younger. Al, I don't remember. He'll come over. Give me I the muscle that. on Cameo. Oh yeah, awesome. I, I love that Art's next comic is going to be uh, Rock Guy and Bernard. <laughs> yeah, Rock Man Bernard and Original Art. And, and Technologically, Al. the muscle is still like 15 years behind us. God bless him. But he just yeah. got—he literally just got a smartphone. I think in the last year or two. He like, texted me the other day, dude. I don't have any internet, dude. He texted me the other day and he said, "Hey, dude, you you ever hear this these things called podcasts?" Yeah. So, well, me and my wife are actually talking about him today a little bit, and I said, I told her, explain it, explain it. Like he graduated high school, and now it's just the next day. <laughs> like, he graduated high like, school, and then he went to work, and now it's the same. He just it's just Groundhog Day for him. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It just continued. He's uh, he's forward. he's almost you know he had that detached retina like Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, but he's, he's got to he's actually got to have another uh, surgery. Yeah, one more yeah. from the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah I talked I, I talked to him for like an hour the other day too. Yeah, yeah. he's awesome. I don't mean to make fun. Oh, of we love we love, the guy. We yeah, love, love Jimmy. Come on. We make fun of the ones we love, and we really make fun of the ones we hate. So in know. both cases, absolutely. We don't really talk about those guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We don't name them. But uh by the way, Jeff East on Cameo, one hundred dollars. That's awesome. Ooh. Who is that? That's, that's the, uh, Super with the Crystal. Yeah, that's young. I, I could have saved him. I couldn't save him, remember? Yeah. I met those guys at the uh, Metropolis uh thing. You are. The baby, the, uh, Aaron Smolinski? He's the baby with the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Bucks. Guy, yeah. Bucks. yeah, I met him. And he was cool, awesome. but their handler was like all handlerly. You know, he's kind of dumb. But uh, yeah, like like Billy D. Williams handler was a yeah. I, yeah. I one one of the Supermans traded me for my comics 
and the drawing stuff, but the other guy, I paid for them because the handler was, oh, he didn't even said that. So I'm like, I don't care, man. Here's 20 bucks. Just sign it. Is Bill Cartwright? Is Bill Cartwright his handler? Yeah, but he, was, he had a purple coat on. He was oh, how awesome was that? Ted Dave checks for Ross Andrew and already there. Ross Andrew. <laughs> he even paused a little bit. He was a little confused and he went, uh, okay. <laughs> well, a few of you did that. I think Johnny did it too. That's why Artie and I did it at the same time. I know. We were crying. It's, I mean, that's sad. We can't even help it then. We got to do inside jokes in front of company. That's you not good. Do it. <laughs> You're I bad. Hey, I give, I give us credit. We were all pretty well behaved during that. As I said, it was one of the quietest oh, yeah, podcasts, and I was we had seven people on, and we were hanging on every word. By the way, don't you think Tad could be um, at Begley Jr. stunt double? He could, oh, maybe. yeah. <laughs> or at Begley could be his stunt double. Exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend that to Tad. Uh, I like later. the fact that that we've been doing this for ten years, and like oh. eight or nine years ago, we had uh, oh Tom Welling. We should uh, be good. I, eight, if you, I bet he's not on cameo. I bet yeah. Tom Eight, eight or nine years ago, our guest was Gail Simone, and then not on cameo. Eight, eight years ago, now eight years later, Tad Stones has is, is been the only guest. Nobody's we ever had Mark Wade on there. Yeah, Mark we had Mark <laughs> on. We had, um, we had Dave Peterson on. Roberson. Mike Norton. Roberson. Well, of course, we've had Mike on several times. We've had Chris on, absolutely. We Wait, had Jamie. Did didn't, 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 didn't Jamie Farr. And Jamie. Yes. Jamie Farr. Jamie and Tad were on the same episode. Just think That's about that. Time. <laughs> that was, it was three hours and thirty minutes. Sixty dollars on cameo, by the way. $60. Who is? Ed Begley is sixty dollars on cameo. That's pretty reasonable. I'm still gonna. I'm gonna send Ozzy some money. Ozzy again. I knew it. I'm gonna do it. I keep thinking about it. I'm getting all creative in my. Ask him if he's ever had Harold's. So we need to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe he might. You know. I bet he has. Two hundred fifty characters wisely already. I get a lot of information. In oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I gotta go. Gotta go right now. All right, all right. I like pink very much, Lois. I like Jack Stones very much, Lois. I like pink stones very much. I like Jamie Farr very much, Lois. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's all that stuff is true. Are we going now? I like yeah. pink very much, Good. Lois. All right, we're I gonna like go. Pink very much, Lois. I like pink very much. Follow us when you see us. Thank you for watching the All Yeah Podcast with special guests Jamie Farr and Ted yes. Stones. They developed our childhood. Our memories of long ago have yes. involved those two men at some point. Yeah. Be nice true. to each other. Stop fighting. Stop crying. Go to bed early. Call your mother. Wash your, your hands. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye there.